Yeah, do that. Yeah, so that's what? my SMR, baby. I love like, yo, what's happening? It's Snoop Dizzle. <laughs> Snoop D to the double O G, and today we rolling up with a little bit of. <laughs> make sure you run on down to Walmart. Bring your kids. Your kids will want it the most. Yeah. Get, make sure you pick up your copy. Of- <laughs> you just go Snoop Dogg and check out to get 15% off your order. <laughs> get 15% off your order. Fucking horrifying. <laughs> we oh. making lobster drinks now. <laughs> oh, good shit. <laughs> Did you learn you could do all this? What do you mean? You have so many face noises. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I go swallow. Oh, I had so much frog juice. <laughs> this is everyone. Everyone hates it. Can you it. hear that or is it just Oh, my I head? can hear it. Okay. That's fucking horrifying. All right. So, Danny. Yeah. Last weekend uh-huh. when we were hanging out, or I guess it was during the week, you and me were sitting down on the couch just having a little, we we're like, I think we've been doing recently, last couple of weeks, we've been like playing around with the idea of like more man days where you and me just hang out <laughs> playing because, around with the idea of being friends. Yeah. 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 We would do this <laughs> whole thing. We're like, I don't know. Like we just like we exist in each other's company for a couple of hours. It's weird. Uh, probably because we're going to comic Palooza Memorial day weekend in Houston, Texas. You can see us. <laughs> you can see us do that live. Yeah, uh, good. And so <laughs> want to. yeah, last week when we were having our, when we were having our mandate or, you know, our mandated mandate, I told you to lock in. <laughs> I told you, you were, you were sitting on your phone. You were waiting yeah. to pick up your mom from the airport. And yeah, I just saw you yeah. scrolling. And I was, I was like, Hey, I'm going to watch a little bit of anime. And I, I started, I watched a little bit of anime and I saw you scrolling away, not paying attention. I was like, Danny, I need you to lock in to the cultural event I'm about to key you on to because we are going to watch Kono Suba together. Uh-huh. And ever since you watched it, you've been on this tyrannical <laughs> rampage of being like, nobody knows what Kono Suba is. <laughs> Meanwhile, the anime men come in here today and they're like, oh, oh, wait, Megamine comes from Slimy Sekai. Anyways, <laughs> wait, no, there's Meg- Megamine and then, oh, Millium. But they knew both of them. You've and that's been the thing. terrible with anime characters today. It's a lot of it's a lot of what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, like I was the person turning on the wrong red light every time somebody got an answer correct. We did a game show today, and Nick holds up the prize and is like, get, get your get your fucking re zero Subaru doll. Oh, it's oh, like a naked woman. I called zero to re zero. <laughs> fucking <laughs> nail me to the wall. <laughs> Anyways, yes, we did our Family Feud episode yeah. today for Anime IRL. It's going to be out in like a month or so, but... We watched Konosuba a bit. We watched like season two, episode six Like six, six or Konosuba. five or something, and you loved it. It's disgusting. You I hated it. loved it so much. <laughs> Nick's there like laughing his ass the off. the biggest fan. Nick's there like, like a fucking, like, I don't even know. I was chortling. Just chortling up a chortling. storm. Just like so funny. Just like this. This wasn't. This is an accurate accurate depiction of you. But this is the vibe you gave, where you're just like beer gut, like so high you can't even see over it. Just yep. like using chips. it as a table. Yeah, 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 like just like chip crumbs all over you. You're wearing a wife beater that's soaked through with chip oil. Yeah, and you're just like laughing chunks out just of your like, mouth. Just like Fox News reporting. Just like <laughs> yeah. fucking having the time of my life. I'm like, oh, Regis. <laughs> Yeah, done it again. <laughs> Hot dog. Oh, Kelly. Um, oh, you sultry wench. I don't like it at all. It was in the episode where darkness. Let me describe what happens. To I someone would who love, to, love to see you do a breakdown on this. Um, uh, Connie Suba. Yep. <laughs> Connie the Subes, <laughs> yes. Connie Subes um, is a guy who has two magic powers. Oh, 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 you're Which, talking about, uh, is it Isao? I forget, I forget his name. 
the um, protagonist? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh his It's Conrad Suba. Conrad <laughs> It's uh it's Conrad Subaru. Yeah, so Conrad has two magic powers. He's been isekai'd into this Cosima. medieval He's been medieval into this isekai world. Yes. And he has two powers, and that's ice and yoink. Yep. And if he uses ice, he freezes something. Mm -hmm. And if he uses yoink, the animators have to work six days of overtime. (laughs) Animating his wiggly little digits, and then (laughs) someone's panties appear in his hands. Mm -hmm. And they go, stop! It's called steel. I, it's funny that the reaction is always like, oh, stop! I just like silently walk over to him and start choking him until he gave me my underwear. Until his eyes just started to turn red. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> just, please. And it's, oh, the funniest part of it always is that everybody loves it. And then when he does it, the entire crowd cheers. It's like, they're, they cele- love it, yeah. they're at a bar. They're celebrating a girl. Like he's, he's trying to steal an apple off somebody's head. A girl walks in. He accidentally steals her underwear and he's just waving it around. Everyone's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. They always go, oh, yeah, he can do it. They're like, what is this shit? Uh, I love this I shit. Fucking, is that underwear? <laughs> oh my God. It's so much if, fun. If that happened to me, I'd literally like, he'd steal my underwear. I'd get up and I'd go, I'm going home now. <laughs> and I would leave. It's just like the way too realistic representation. Of, is that my fucking, is that my underwear? And it's like, all right, all right. I don't, I, I'm going to tell my therapist about this tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so he's, uh, yeah, he does that. And then the episode we watched, uh, darkness, yes. who is a tank, I yes. suppose, who loves to get walloped. She mm-hmm. loves a beating. She loves a beating. And Conrad loves a beating her. God, he, 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 Conrad yeah. loves hitting women. <laughs> he does. He's a, he's a champion for gender equality. They've made that super clear. It's very funny. Um, Conrad's super into hitting women. Uh, darkness has to look like this fucking just Ho of a milkmaid. Mm-hmm. She's dressed in some alternate outfit because her dad wants her to marry some just fucking some wet noodle. Yeah, of a, just some like dweeb. just like an incredibly nice dude, but like yeah. she wants like some royalty monster to like lust upon her every night. Yeah. yeah so this dude's like too nice to her. Mm. And she's like, I want, I want just a fucking Cheeto dust covered. She, she wants the representation of me watching yeah. like, <laughs> Danny's perception of me watching. Yeah, she's like, I want a dip spitting Trump loving mud wrestling, wrestling. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. John um, Cena's is a religion. Yeah. Um, and so he has to like fuck up this marriage, I guess. And that happens. And it's horny as hell. Yeah. Yeah. So much fun. So So much fun. I got a decent amount of um, positive feedback, by the way, calling fairy tale horny. I, you, uh, quite honestly, one of the more decisive things we've ever posted. Decisive or visive? Because decisive would say that it was like very much, yeah, visive. Because like it was like it was split down the middle mm. where everyone was like a fairy tale. What 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 fairy tale is Danny watching? While other people were being like, I can't watch fairy tale with anybody else because somebody was talking about like a oh, pleasure tentacle scene or something like that. And I was sure. like, I was like, I don't remember that scene at all. <laughs> as far as I remember fairy tale, it's literally just like okay, Natsu and Gray don't wear shirts. <clears throat> So neither does Luffy, you know, like Luffy's uh-huh. always wearing a vest of some sort. So I'm like, oh, wow, six packs. And like, obviously, Urza has her say sail- like her Sailor Moon transformations where like you kind of see the outline of her titties when she switches between her like armored version and her samurai version. But yeah. like besides that, I don't remember being that horny. Lucy, <clears throat> a character you are starkly forgetting yep. is constantly just like strung up in getting porked by something. I just don't, I, I maybe, and listen, I haven't, I haven't seen fairy tale in 10 years. Maybe I just like blocked that out of my memory. <laughs> you I, must don't, I don't remember like Lucy ever just getting like groped. She, I've like, only, like, I've like, only SAO, seen... like SAO, like vine monster picks oh, yeah. up the little, the little one and just like, like yanking around by her leg and her skirts lifted and all yeah. that, that kind I've of shit. Only seen clips of Lucy being groped. I, <laughs> All right, here, Lucy, fairy tale. Yeah, what's the what's the final mystery? Uh, the wild card word. Grow. Do you think if you just type in, look up Lucy Heartphilia or whatever, okay, and then heart, scene. Heartphilia, or Heartphilia. Okay, so we're gonna do Lucy Heartphilia, not fairy tale, and then do scene. Scene. Yeah, just like a scene of her. Just you know, a scene. Yeah, let's see what YouTube chooses to be like. Lucy Heartphilia, cute moments. 
Hmm. Uh, Lucy, uh, future Lucy's sacrifice. Hmm. Uh, Lucy confronts her father. A, these might be spoilers. Uh, goodbye, Aquarius. Almost kiss. Top Lucy. Uh, top five Lucy Hartfilia moments. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and say that like, oh wow, Lucy's never been like drawn. Oh, I have safe search on. Hold up, hold up, hold <laughs> up. Like, oh wait, no, I have safe search off. Oh, it's like nice. Oh wait, I have it on. Lucy Hartfilia raw dog oh, and pork. Oh wait, wait, L L Lucy Hartfilia sexy scene fairy tale. There we go. That's what we're looking for. I have Natsu and Gray see Lucy naked as uh, like option three. Uh, I, I I didn't get that one. I'm on YouTube. Might be more tailored to your uh, your preferences. Let's say. I disagree. Uh, we got Lucy. Oh, oh, Lucy appears to be on a stage of sorts. Oh, she's fully in a bikini. There it is. Fully in a bikini. Um, performing for a crowd of men by the looks of it. And oh, here comes Urza. Urza is also. Oh my God. All right. Well. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wowie. Wow. Wow. You. Wow. That is an outfit. Oh, we're getting jiggle physics on the boobs. There, oh, speaking of Konosuba. Oh. The first time we see big time darkness, budget for jiggle physics. <laughs> the first time we see darkness. This show is not like a great looking show. That's the funny part. It looks like <laughs> shit. Except when someone rounds a corner. Mm, and just, whoop, they take yeah. a second to settle. Yeah. God, so we watched show. a bit of Konosuba. So much fun. Yeah. I still haven't caught up. I need to catch up for season three. And mm -hmm. I know like, that's why I want to, I want to come on here and I'll talk about Konosuba because I fucking love it. I love it so goddamn much. It's so funny. Cause it's just, none of them are good people. Orlan Orlandez goes, it's wild how delusional Nick is about fairy tale. I listen, I listen based off what I just saw. Wow. Okay. Maybe I was wrong. Uh, listen, all I remember is that Natsu yells out fire punch every 35 seconds and Gray is Sasuke with ice. I, uh, that, and then Gray has that blue haired woman who loves him. I uh, was obsessed with him, follows him everywhere. Like, I don't know. I don't even remember people ship Lucy and in Natsu. Is that a thing that people happen? Probably. Panda mom goes, why is Danny only watching the sus scenes? If I'm looking up fairy tale, mm -hmm. I'm not like, oh, oh, N Natsu beats the big bad boss. Oh, Natsu, you big dragon punchy moment. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking don't give a Actually, shit. I've never even like looked up except when I was like in high school. Mm -hmm. I remember in like high school, Fairy Tale had what I considered to be the best animation like out at the time. Okay. Because they were doing like the fire effects are cool. The fire effects are very cool, which and, you would hope in yeah. a story about the son of a dragon. You'd certainly hope. Yeah. Um, but I remember being like, man, this show looks sick. I'm about to make this my whole personality. Mm -hmm. And I was looking up scenes about it. And I was like, oh, this look this this looks naughty. Mm -hmm. This looks a little do a What's little, wrong with that? How this old looks were you? a little bad. I don't know, just like uh like 14. And you were worried? <laughs> and you were if I had stumbled any the smuttier the it was when I was 14, the better. I was yeah. just out there jorking. I was, I was out there. I was I was watching this I was watching the tenth Mon time saying jorking at me in the I was last there, half hour. I was out there fucking watching Monster Masume just to feel something. Are you kidding me? I was just looking for like violence. Like I was swiping right on sense. like any horny thing. I was like, nope, or swiping left. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, get me get me someone getting torn apart. What happened? Oh, Jesus Christ. Me. Nick just yoinked Yeah, you're just, you were kind of out of scene a little bit, so I was, yeah. I was just... Anyway, let's move on to a show just, we've seen or know anything about. I know plenty about Konosuba. How dare you? Okay, I mean, How dare tell. you? And I will be vindicated in this take. Um, okay, so I want to talk about something that I watched that you didn't watch, yeah. just for the people out there who are like, maybe only have Netflix or maybe have been scrolling past this Netflix show and oh, want to yeah. know what it is. Um, so I sat down this week and I watched three episodes of the Grimm variations, uh, which is on Netflix. And it's based off, is it like the, the brothers Grimm's stories? It's like, um, for those of you who don't know the brothers Grimm stories, you know, the stories, you just may not know what they're called. It's like little red riding hood, Cinderella, um, Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. Like all of the stuff that Disney stuff is based off basically. Uh, and so they're like super famous stories from I think like the 1800s or something. They're well beyond being trademarkable, which is why they're everywhere. Yeah. And so this is like a variation of every single one. I think there's six to eight episodes. I've only watched the first three-ish. I watched Cinderella, um, Little Red Riding Hood, and I'm like three-fourths of the way through Hansel and Gretel. And it's animated by Wit, which is crazy. That is crazy. I'm just like, I, I don't know why. I, like Either Wit is just being outbid on everything, or yeah. they just don't care anymore. Or they're like, somebody will come to us. Yeah, Wit is not 
choosing its targets. No, it's smart. Yeah, like, and so they're like, yeah, we'll do this Netflix adaptation of children's stories yeah. in like it, the goriest, most fucked up way imaginable. Yeah. So like the really the one that stuck out to me, the Cinderella one was so so. It's like a take on Cinderella, except instead of like the ugly stepsisters being like super mean. Yeah. It's she like, has boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Like Cinderella does. Yeah, I yes, just, like, I just like, like the idea loses that loses her glass bra behind, and someone's like, "Why the <laughs> fuck would you wear this?" I just like the idea that like the anime version of Cinderella has to be like instead of mean sisters, she's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, it's like it's like kind of like that, except like mental. So it's like everybody loves the 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 biological sister, and everybody hates the stepsisters. Mm -hmm. And the biological sister is like playing with dolls and basically like treating everybody in her life as like toys. Okay, and so she's like just like like from the shadows just fucking with everybody she like i'm not gonna spoil anything but so it's like a twist on cinderella to make really the the biological daughter who like loses the father in cinderella the main character of it that everybody loves what really stuck with me and i am gonna spoil the little red riding hood like episode a little bit here they changed little red riding hood to be like a vr like a vr like futuristic world where okay. like, like basically fallout has happened and in the fallout world, there's one bastion of reality left and it's this giant VR city. And so if you live in this giant VR city, basically it's like a real city, but you can use like VR, like eye droplets to make yourself look like whatever you want. And you have to like pay for all these eye droplets. You can be hot, you can be tall, skinny, ripped, any of that. And it's like this super futuristic world. And it opens with this girl in a red dress. She's like a flapper dress. She's going to this club. And like she sits down, she orders champagne. It like materializes from the menu. Right. This guy called Mr. Gray sits down with her and is like, "You're gorgeous. I love your dress and all of that." And she's like, "Oh, cool." And they have a couple of drinks. And he's like, "Should we go? Should we go? Like the party's not over yet. Let's go to this back room." She's like, "Yeah, absolutely." And they go back and like you see like all these rooms, all these people fucking. And then right. she's just like, "Oh, like she like jumps onto the bed. She's like, oh, I'm so excited." And he's like, "Me too." And she like, gets on her. And yeah. there's just this distended, like like not distended, extended like like. R word like torture wow. scene for like two and a half minutes of him just like open like, just like opening her up with a scalpel like stabbing her in the eye and then like it's just like him and then it's like he goes on this tirade of serial killings basically because he's the wolf he's supposed yeah. to be the wolf hunting these little red riding hoods so he goes down to the regular world and he's like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna like I want to because it's like a VR world so he's like I want the real thing I want yeah, like, yeah. I want to I want to like hunt down a real person and kill him right. and so he like goes to this madame who's supposed to be like the grandmother and he's like get me a little red riding hood like somebody who's consenting or something mm -hmm. like not consenting but like find me something to hunt yeah and so he's like all right give me a week I'll find the little red riding hood and so there's this girl who's like I forget what her name was but she's the little red riding hood and she like lures him into her apartment basically drugs him cuts his eyes out opens his guts like slits open his wrist like cuts his dick wow. off like all this shit a tale and, as old as time and that's it it was it, it was it was the girl with the it was a girl dragon with the dragon tattoo, tattoo. it was yeah. like it was like that scene exactly it was like like oh like murdering and fucking r wording the 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 the, yeah. the wolf basically and i was yeah. like oh my god it was so fucked up yeah. it was like, i was like sitting next to dorothy and i was like this is this is gory. It's like the goriest thing I've seen in anime in years. And I was like, this is a little red riding hood. Crazy. So they're putting the grim in the grim variation. So if you're like, if you want something that's like, if you like, like horror anime, if you like, 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 uh, like kind of like a, a fucked up show, like a perfect blue type thing, or, you know, um, what is it? Terraformers or blood sea, something like that. Then the grim variations is actually, it's pretty good for you. It's, it's, it's a fun variation on the stories. You know, yeah, the, it sounded fun by your, I mean, like it's, it's well animated. It's wit. Yeah, yeah. Um, the stories are built in a way that's fun to watch and keep yeah. around with. You like the girl with the dragon tattoo. You're going to love this iteration of it. Yeah. Uh, and so it is, it's well animated and it's like done through the medium of these two brothers talking to their little sister. And it's like, <laughs> it, they're like, their little sister's like, tell me the story. Tell yeah. me the story. And, like, and then they're like, one of them oh, just like ashes a cigarette out. And he's like, yeah. oh, I got a story no, for no, you. No, no, no. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you want a fucking yeah. story? He's like, puts it out on his tongue. Yeah. Like, oh, no. I... yeah, all right. Here is Hansel and Gretel are in a yeah. fucking time capsule on the moon, which is apparently the way they're doing that story. So yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun. If you if you want to watch it, I I like it looks good. It's like it's just like one brother tells eight out of the nine stories, and then it's like, I want I want Yuji to tell me a story. And it's like, 
Oh, I could tell the last one. He's like, nah, nah, nah. Uh, she yeah. wants me to tell one. Yeah. All right. Once upon a time, day was Hansel, days was Gretel. <laughs> they are fucking. They fucking. <laughs> Everybody knows they were brother and sister, but they didn't care. She had that <laughs> badonk a donk. It's like, please, this is why we don't have you step up to the plate. I like the idea of it being the opposite, where it's like one brother is like, and then the, and then the wolf was dissected. And then she's like, can you tell me stories? He's like, what the fuck have you? <laughs> Been telling her. He comes in, he's like, Tease made. Yeah. What did you tell her? Yeah. <laughs> she did what with his penis? <laughs> yeah, no. So the grim variations are Steve fucking, Harvey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did what? <laughs> Just pans to the like the camera that they somehow know is yeah. there. Uh, anyway. Yeah, we did Family Feud today. Uh, um, yeah, I got Steve on the brain. <laughs> you got Steve on the brain in a big way. Danny wanted me to do a bald cap and a mustache. Uh, but all right, do you want to talk about the things that we just watched together? Yeah. yeah. So me and Danny yeah. are in a weird spot right now, uh, waiting for- In our relationship. Well, in, a, in our relationship, I'd say we're- We're better than ever. Better than ever. I, I went home to Sarah last week after we just like hung out. No, two weekends ago. Oh, yeah. When Sarah was uh, hunting Joe Biden. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or however long that was. <clears throat> we recorded- Unsuccessfully, the, like dad. Yeah. Ugh, pff, fucking, I, I know. know. Waste of a person. Fucking Jesus um, Christ. My girlfriend, that is. Yeah. Not the lovely Joe Biden. <laughs> Not the lovely, lovely, <laughs> never done a wrong thing Joe Biden. But um, after we recorded the episode, I did something that I rarely ever do, which is hang out with you. And I like did that, and then I went home. We hung out for a long time, just chatting, mm -hmm. getting sandwiches. And then I went home, and I talked to Sarah, and I was like, Nick and I hung out today, and it was the best time I've ever had. <laughs> 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 like, it wasn't work. I love our walks to that sandwich shop. Yep. Unironically, oh, they're great. Yeah, it's just I waiting for Neutron that. every four steps to fucking yeah. piss on something. It takes yeah. us a half hour to get there. We just we, me and Danny, we we're the sandwich boys. I like it. It's nice. We're yeasty boys. I'm sick of that sandwich. Oh boy. yeah, no, no, no. There's like definitely other places we could eat. <laughs> yeah, like there's many other places to get food. It's just easy, and I like that walk. Yeah, it's yeah. a great walk. But like at that at the end of that walk, so many places to eat. Yeah, so many places. Oh. Can I, since we're still kind of in the cold open waters, okay? Uh, can I do a possible cold middle? Get it. Last night. It's so episode 63. They know who we are. Every other set. Yeah. Fuck yeah. it. Fuck it, posers. Yeah, you fucking losers. You don't even know the punk scene like we do. Dude, the people for Comic Palooza told me that we have to be PG, and I'm sweating. I don't know. I'm so stressed. I'm going to swear accidentally, for sure. I'm, for he, sure. He was like, you you can say, like, PG swears, darn, darn it. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, what about I'm like, Jorkin? Oh. <laughs> Does what about Jorkin? Dude, can I what about whore? <laughs> 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 Can I say slut, but like with ill intentions? I messaged him because one of my panels is going to be like, which has been hotel character would be a great manager. I got to come up with something. Oh, fuck. I'm like, I'm like, all right. Because I can't react to things live because of copyright. So I was like, I need some uh -oh. has been hotel. People thing. are going to realize you're not talented. I know. <laughs> oh, no. So right now, feel free to comment a different idea. Yeah. But right now it's like, uh, what has been hotel characters would be good managers. I have some funny material based on it. Yeah. And uh, he was like, can you keep it PG? And I was like, would, I was like, okay, I have a, uh, an example joke. Uh, <laughs> I want to pitch. I was like, I have an example joke. Can you tell me? So the I'm just getting tag teamed, <laughs> right? Like just fucking shooting loads. I was like, can you tell me the rating that this would be? <clears throat> and I was like, all right, up next, Angel Dust. Now, Think in your mind, what makes a good manager? I'll give you a second. And then I wait a second. I wrote that in parentheses. Mm. I wait a second. And then I go, did you think horny and on coke? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, how was that? And uh. he was like, not PG. And you're like, <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'm like, please. <laughs> did you think Randy and on uh, the, the white sniffy snoofs? You got to just, gonna be, you got to TikTokify like, it. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like, uh, did you think, and then I'll look at the guy who hired us and be like, please let me say horny. <laughs> please My vocabulary is fuck. not fucking big enough for this shit. <laughs> so we'll see nightmare. how it goes. I think I'm going to channel that anxiety and manic energy and just make it 
real intense oh, yeah. for every panel. Mm-hmm. Um, so come to Comic Palooza and see us for one day until we get canceled. And they're like, you never, you don't, never mind. You know what? They're not even paying us. We go up one day and they're like, that was fucking awful. I'm like, hey, no. Uh, okay, yeah. cool. I guess we'll do the next yeah. two days. I'll be like, all right, see us at uh, Comic, uh, or see us at Colossal Con where yeah. they pay us and let me swear yeah, yeah, yeah. and drink. Yeah, I was like, well, we can't offend John Cena. John Cena doesn't want to hear the swears. Yeah, I guess. He doesn't want to hear the swear. You know John Cena doesn't swear. I'm going to be like, damn. He'll be like, what? what did you <laughs> <get that? laughs> I love the idea of just every panelist, just John Cena just standing behind them. <laughs> Shaking with great. Right? But anyway, so every Saturday uh, or every other Saturday, I have this like D&D group that I just started and... We're trying For the to- world's busiest man, you have so many little things. I you're like we're going to underground comedy night. This we're on the we're on the list, and also I got eight hour D and D Saturdays. I'm already sick of it. I'm I, sick of the D and D. I don't know I why. You, you're like you were literally earlier. I was like, Danny, how much money do you want for anime IRL? And you're like, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't you're like Sarah likes to have weekends. Meanwhile, you're like, babe, sorry, no, it's, no one else is gonna play this half elf fucking it's, ranger. Because my fucking roommates want to do it, and I've always wanted to do D and D. But now that I'm in it, I'm like, God, these go late. <laughs> yeah, nobody realizes D and D is fun until you hit hour three, and you're like, "Oh, we're halfway through the day." I know, but anyway, so we do D and D. And yesterday we were hosting, um, and so oh God, it's like a revolving, it's like a revolving household situation. Well, because half the members live in Laguna, which is two hours away, and so, but now we're gonna host permanently because they like our place more, which is way Wild. better which is way better for you yeah for sure when you end at 1 a.m and you don't have a two-hour drive home i'm sorry time out the other the house is in laguna beach and yeah. somehow your house is better it's a small house okay. it's like seconds from the ocean though. okay which makes up for That's it sick. it's so sick but anyway um so it's like my ex roommate Adam, mm-hmm. who I'm very good friends with, yes. and then like all of these people that he knows, and then all of my roommates, including Sarah. And so, is she in the campaign? She's in the campaign. Um, Yikes. <laughs> relax. She wanted. Girls to- aren't allowed in DD. You know this. I know. Mm. But anyway, I can, uh, wouldn't she- stop asking about it. <laughs> but anyway, she, uh, or not she. So, one of the guys shows up on time. Mm. He's this French guy. His name's Jay. Very funny, very French. Gotcha. Um, he shows up. We've I've met him one other time. He's before. like, oh, the croissant, the croissant <laughs> rogue is here. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, yeah, he's all wee wee, you yeah. know, classic. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, like, they're fucking, uh, they're not, they're all, they're all fake. <laughs> That's the amount of energy I was willing <laughs> to put into the French. Bit. That's fair. But so, uh, he shows up. He's on time. I've met him like once before. We're doing all small talk and stuff. We got tons of mama and big papa's pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, oh, and then we, we get a text. We get an alert text saying that there's a criminal in our area and to lock your doors. Oh, I called Josh during all this. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And, and they're like, they're like, there's a criminal in the area, lock your doors. And we're like, oh, whatever. This happens all the time, blah, blah. And then we get another what? text. D- does it? It's like through the citizens app, you know. Oh, okay. And then we—I don't have the citizens app. Well, yeah, there's criminals. There are criminals everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a very unsafe place. Yeah. So then we get another alert, and it says police are establishing a perimeter, and there's a helicopter hovering exclusively above our house. Good. And it's just us and Jay, and we're waiting for everyone else, and we're like, all of us are like. What, what's up with Jay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jay, uh, is this an alibi? Yeah, be be 100% real with us. And he's like, oh, wee oui, wee, oui, I am totally was at d and uh, Sorry, I need to uh, take this wine sauce off my baguette. Uh, <laughs> oh, how I commit murder, I say, I would say, uh, impossible. Yeah, I was at the d and Yes, is I would say, I would say, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a how you say uh, I was playing a high elf rogue. <laughs> yeah, but so um so then the other uh friends like send us a text and they're like we can't they're get like, in. Have you have you fucking <laughs> seen Jay? Yeah, like, Don't let Jay in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're like they're just like slow turn. They're, yeah. they're like yeah we we just picked up Jay. We're coming. That would be like, fucking Skinwalker. <laughs> That's a short film right there. That'd be cool. You let a skinwalker into your house. <laughs> I guess so. That's heck. But so they're like, we can't get into your 
neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Like our whole street is locked up by police. Mm -hmm. And we're like, all right, we'll wait it out. Like hours go by, like two hours go by. Then we see a car pull into our like street. We're like, oh, they're letting people in. And we call Adam and we're like, hey, a van just got in. We think it's good. And then he's like, oh, is it the SWAT van? And we're like, ha ha, silly joke, Adam. SWAT, like a clown car, SWAT men bust out of this van. Canine unit peels in, like drifts down into my street. It's my neighbor. It's my immediate neighbor. Holy they got the fuck. dogs all up in the neighbor. They have like fucking blitz from uh Yeah, from they're, Rainbow they're just Six. throwing three frags in. They got recruit in the back. Yeah, they've got thermite like yeah. elbowing this fucking like breaching charge. Holy on shit. And we're all just like, meanwhile, me being like the fucking nerd, like antisocial weirdo that I am, like everyone's like glued to the window watching what's going on and i'm like all right who wants a joystick and who wants a regular controller for street fighter yeah. i got street fighter set up <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> guys listen guys i only have I only have three joysticks yeah. all right somebody's gonna have to take a hit here yeah i'm like guys no one ever played street fighter with me please <laughs> i've never had this much time to have people sit on the couch and play street fighter well it's funny because our friends couldn't get in and they ended up getting in at like 10 p.m which sucked to begin D D. then yeah. um but on top of that Jay stuck in our house because no one can get out either. And we don't want to like go check. We don't want to like scamper out and have him be like, it's him and yeah, just and light us just, up. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I ended up plucking mugging bullets out of a French man this weekend. So that was last night. Holy shit. Yeah. Have you ever met your neighbors? Yeah, they're just like a really sweet, don't speak English Asian couple in their like 70s. What? Dead, torn apart, but executed right in the street. Did you see them get arrested? They dragged them out. No, we didn't see how it resolved. Why would you? That's the number one. Why would you? That's. We were looking. It just kept. It went on for hours. It started at like 4 p.m. Ended at like 11 or 10. That's an incredibly slow police response time. I mean, the perimeter. It took them. They didn't know. I guess the person must have fled like into the neighbor's backyard is my guess. Okay, so it wasn't. You're old, very cute. Don't I didn't English, ask. Asian. Oh. I don't know. Knock on some doors. <laughs> yeah. There was a, a dude. A, a dude hit one of the our, our my neighbor's garages recently, and uh, there was just a guy. There was just like uh, our neighborhood watch guy walking around like I'm collecting information. It's like yeah. get the fuck off my lawn. <laughs> like, I'm giving, <laughs> I'm giving a rat's ass that somebody got their car ran into in a hit and run here. Yeah. I could give two shits. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was wild. So Kaiju number eight. Yeah. You want to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. Good. How'd you you liked it? Oh, yeah. Okay, I feel like the biggest talking points that we definitely talked about, the opening and the ending being revealed, what the fuck is going on there? The opening yep. is fucking sick. Mm -hmm. The ending... It's by Youngblood, or it's either it's either Youngblood blood by mm -hmm. Abyss or Abyss by Youngblood. I do not... I think it's Youngbloods. I think it's Young Money Get Bitches. It's, a, it's Abyss by Youngblood, yeah. Gotcha. Um, and then who's the outro? One, one Republic. <laughs> Republic. Which is... Insane. That's a huge miss. Yeah. It that is the most weird as hell. It is the most like, you're now listening to 94 <laughs> seven. Like, <laughs> like here's the eighth time you've heard this, this yeah. hour song. Yeah. Like it's Harry Styles. It's very, very Harry Styles. The opening's sick though. Oh, it's the so opening's good. like a sick, like chainsaw man outro. Yeah. I loved it. It's, I was like enthralled. You, I, and you want to know what my notice? You want to know the first thing I wrote down when I saw it? Give me the fourth. This opening is wild. Parentheses. Danny will love. Yeah. I just, I knew the second I saw like high level CG and like mirror images, like popping out and twisting all yeah. to like this, like kind of like intense, like indie rock song. I was like, oh, Danny's going to fucking eat this up. It was sick. And I, it starts as nonsense. Like mm -hmm. it starts as just like geometric shapes. Mm -hmm. And then it turns into like kaijus. Yeah. And that's sick. Yeah. Uh, so that was very cool. The music throughout the whole show is like the best soundtrack I've ever heard. See, it's so funny. Cause it's not that I think that the soundtrack is bad. I think they've gotten so it's so I can like notice that it is noticeably unique. Yeah. Like I'm like, I'm like listening to it and they're just like throwing sounds in, you know, yeah. it's like depending on like what they're doing, it's like a very different vibes that are being curated, but it's so outside of what's normal. Yeah. I love it. I, it's so rare that I notice an anime soundtrack mm -hmm. like attack on Titans is very good. Um, Madoka Magica is very good. Yes. Those are like the only ones I know. 
I like what else have we watched? Like I can't even. Oh, we've remember... watched no, but like iconic like music soundtracks like Samurai Champloo, right. um, Cowboy Bebop, but I just, anything yeah. jazzy, you know? Yeah, but I just mean Cowboy Bebop is great. But like while watching a show, like I don't remember a goddamn second of music from JJK or like My Hero or like any of these other shows. My Hero does a pretty good job with like swelling moments with its music. Yeah. Cause I like, I never cry reading the MHA manga, but when I rewatch, like when I watch the MHA anime, I cry like a baby. Yeah. Like I cry like three or four times a season. Yeah. Like, like the most recent time, like when Deku was like reaccepted back into UA, I read that in moment in the manga and I was like, oh nice. But like yeah. MHA does such a good job of making moments serious through their, their music choices. So MHA, I would say like definitely has good music. JJK part one had better music design than part two of season two. Cause like there was the aquarium scene that was like very visibly noticed, like the use yeah. of silence and music to like perfectly build out like what I thought was like one of the best scores. In you years. love that aquarium. Bit. I love the, it's it's yeah. like high art in anime. It's like yeah. one of the, like the most beautiful art moments I've seen. Cause it is so vastly different from the manga and Kaiju number eight isn't really so like I just recently reread it and I'm enjoying the watch, but I, just, I fucking can't get over how they look. Yeah. And this episode, Kikuru is like Kikuru Shinomiya looks really good. She looks she looks exactly like she should. Yeah. Uh, and I think like she's gonna look really good. And I can see the defense force suits look really good. And I think the problem is nobody's in their defense force suits yet. Yeah. Like once Kafka and Reno get in their defense force suits, I feel like they'll look better. But like. They just introduced the two. There's like three like side characters. So there's the redheaded guy who was on the motorcycle who pulls up. And then there's also a- real quick. This is episode two. two. Yes. Yeah. We Sorry. just didn't say that anyone watching this a year in advance is going to like true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like, what the fuck are they talking yeah. about? So episode two of Kaiju number eight, we yeah. got to see all of the side characters who will fill and not all of them. There's a couple of like vice captains and platoon leaders to get introduced later on. But they introduced Ao, or Aoi, or A-O-I, I never know how to say that. I'm going to say Ao, um, who is, for all intents and purposes, I thought black in the manga. Uh, like, just looks melanated in yeah. the manga, like, at least a little bit. And they just made him a straight-up white blonde dude. Yeah. It was weird, because you showed me his manga, like, mm-hmm. panel, and I was like, that dude looks not white yeah. in this and you're like he's not he's not like i never reading it was like oh yeah not a white dude and like, yeah. uh, this is kind of what jjk is facing right now with hikari because hikari is his character who's drawn rather ambiguously in the the jjk manga and everyone's like oh you know like hikari one of people's favorite characters in all of jjk like how are they going to be drawn like is it gonna, like is he going to be melanated like some people think he's going to be is he going to be like like blonde and white or is he going to be a black dude with purple hair so it's like mm-hmm. it's like people oscillate between the two and i really never tend to care about these kinds of things like the biggest the biggest problem or issue you could see with this like revolve around this topic usually revolves around robin mm-hmm. um cuz robin, robin oh this is so interesting you brought this up. Mm-hmm. Go on. Uh, because Robin is like, especially pre-time skip, the way that she was drawn in the manga made everybody believe she was more melanated. And pre-time skip, she is. Like inherently, like, pre- mo- like pre-time like skip Robin is more melanated. Yeah. And people say that, and then after the time skip, she just gets like, she just becomes a Japanese woman, right? So she goes from like, definitely more like Latina coded to like Japanese right. in the time skip. And everyone was like, oh, the reason that Robin was more melanated in like pre time skip is because of a printing error. And uh, so- I thought they were gonna say, cause she's in Alabasta and it's Yeah, cause it's, just, it's hot as shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's just tan. Yeah, could yeah. absolutely also work. Yeah. And so everyone's like, oh, you know, like it's a printing error and they fixed it with a time skip and that's why she's less melanated now. I, I with Robin, I don't care as much. I, I just like, I think she looks dope both ways. Ow looks, owie or out Ow looks way better, like melanated. And so, in my opinion, does Akari. Like to me, it's not like, like, oh, like, oh, fucking, I give a shit either way. I'm like, I want whatever looks better with the character design. And I think Robin looks cool both ways. Also yeah. because like her whole design changes, like she gets rid of her bangs and all that. So like, it's a big change post yeah. time skip. It's funny because I looked up Hikari mm-hmm. and he looks Hispanic to me. Yeah, well, that's the thing is like Hikari is so ambiguously drawn yeah. that truly like he could be anything. But I, like, I can see him also being white though. Did you see that? Like this manga photo, right? Yeah. yeah. But like if you if you scroll over like these drawings of him as a white dude with blonde hair, it's yeah. just so uninspiring. It's, it's, it's uninspiring. Like, I just don't yeah. like. And then like these are like a lot of, I don't know if this is a, like a fan drawing, but this might actually be an official drawing where he's got like purple hair and he's darker. Yeah. And I'm like, this right here looks way better than like, 
Like he just he just looks way cooler like this. Yeah. You well, know? it's interesting too because the reason I was like excited you brought it up about Robin mm-hmm. is because I recently saw that like people are saying the same thing they do with Robin about Usopp. That Usopp is losing his melanin in recent episodes. Really? Of One Piece. Yeah. He's like getting lighter and lighter skin tone. That's crazy. And apparently Zoro also went through that. Like he was a little more, he's definitely tan. Zoro was darker, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, he's like tan in early ones. And it makes sense because they're like Caribbean pirates. Yeah. So you'd think they'd all be like, isn't Luffy like Luffy is supposed uh, Dominican to be Brazilian. or something? He's Brazilian? supposed to be Brazilian. Uh, Usopp, this is all from an SBS. So if everyone- if, What is SBS? So- um, Suck butt sucker. Section, the suck butt section. Yeah. Every chapter, uh, Oda in the manga like answers questions at the end. Oh, and yes, so like, yes, he'll yeah. choose like three questions. And yeah. like one of the questions a couple of years ago was like, if the One Piece pirates <laughs> had to be from somewhere, where would yeah. they be from? And, and it was rec- like- the Recently it was discovered that like, a decade ago, someone was like, is Robin melanated? And he was like, yes, of course. And then recently they're like, I thought Robin was melanated. And then he said, I lied. Yeah, it was like, literally <laughs> just like fucking whoopsie, my bad. Like, I wanted to change things. Uh, and that's just kind of the way that Oda, that's kind of the way that Oda like leads his story. Like mm. the biggest thing, like one of the biggest things people say in the One Piece universe is like, there's no way to scale One Piece because it's so inconsistent in its storytelling. And it's just because Oda draws and writes what the, yeah. whatever the fuck he wants to. Yeah. And it's like, all right, he's just going to do stream of consciousness onto the paper and you're going to, you're going to enjoy it and you're going to read it and you're going to be stuck in this universe. But like, I don't, I don't remember where Robin's from, but Frankie's American. Um, Chopper was like Norwegian. Uh, Luffy's Brazilian. Usopp is from, I think like South Africa. I think that's what he's supposed to be. He's, he's supposed to be like African. Yeah. I don't remember what part of Africa he was Sanji's in. Sanji's French. Sanji's French. Zoro's Japanese, obviously. Fucking samurai. Yeah. Um, Jimbei, I don't know if Jimbei was around. The fucking Jimbei's a Atlantis. fucking like demon monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's yeah, a like, fish man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like, I don't remember where Robin was from, but like, yeah. that's the thing. It's like, it's been a big, it's been a big talking point and yeah. Robin is truly like the center point of that talking point. That's so interesting. Speaking of like all that, I like, this is so hardly like a thing we have to talk about, Yeah. but like something that's so interesting to me about One Piece is a lot of the merch I see and it could just be where the story is currently or where it was when the merch was made. Mm-hmm. But I keep seeing a bunch of merch of all the characters wearing like kimonos. Yeah. And like Wano. samurai stuff. It's Wano. Is Wano like just pseudo Japan? Is that why? Yeah. Gotcha. It's, it's, what, I, didn't, if, I didn't know if that was part of it. Where like Oda's like, I'm kind of sick of doing a pirate thing. I'm going to do like a Japanese oriented thing. Well, the thing is like every time they hop off onto an island, the island is themed after a place. So right. like Dressrosa is supposed to be like, I think South American or like Caribbean. It's like a bunch of like flat. It's like a flower island. Um, and then like, it's like led like the, the Royal family is like uh, Veronica. And oh, what's the one who's the really pretty one that Sanji's in love with. I totally space her name, but like, like dress rose is supposed to be like some version of like, li- like Latina, like Latin America. And then Wano is supposed to be just Japan. Yeah. And it's so funny. Cause you know, samurai there's ninja. And they're also like, Wano has it bowed to the world's government. And also Wano has samurais and they're stronger than every pirate ever. And I'm like, <laughs> I, like, there's not a manga I've ever seen that's ever been like, hey, uh, this Japanese coded country isn't the greatest country. Yeah, like, yeah. like uh, recently the Black Clover manga, Asta gets sent to the land of the rising sun or something or like the land of sun. And he lands there and there's like seven, there's like seven warriors there who are just stronger than ever, every wizard on earth. Right. And they're just like, hey, we're going to teach you our incredibly way stronger version of magic. And say, like, hey man, would have appreciated you getting involved yeah a little earlier yeah. yeah it's like every single time it's like oh look it's japan oh look it's the strongest people we've ever found yeah that makes sense i love it I, like america would do the same thing yeah it's sure. like J- japan's idea of themselves in america always makes me chuckle yeah because it's just like japan's idea especially in like street fighter of america is just like who's the, who's the Ameri- dial yeah yeah like the american dude in street fighter has just got like the fucking like slicked back yeah, blonde hair shades flat top yeah. and just fucking ready to break something at any at yeah. any point and like yeah you'll probably run into that yeah. here uh but, but yeah. outside of the opening and the closing and kaiju, kaiju number eight yes. yeah what did you what did you feel about this episode this is definitely i said it last week this should have came out in like a two-part premiere. Yeah. Because you need this episode. Episode one's so nothing. Mm -hmm. It's such a like weak nothing first episode. This is the fun shit. Yeah. Like this is like some goofy dude wears my body shenanigans. Yeah. 
where he's like busts out of the hospital. Animation's great in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, busts out of the hospital. Not the best animated episode we saw this week, though. No, it's which not. Which is crazy to say, yeah. considering the budget they have. Yeah. Um, busts out of the hospital. They're like doing some yucks. Uh, cool big fight that he has. Music's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I liked all of it, except I finally pinpointed, and I told you about it, I pinpointed why I don't like the design of the kaiju mm-hmm. in the anime opposed to the manga. Kai- he- specifically Kafka. Kafka, yeah. yeah. Kaiju number eight, specifically. Yes. He has no delts. Yes, he has no, no delts, delts or traps. Yeah, so yeah. he's this long sausage man. Mm-hmm. And for anyone who doesn't know, your delts are like the like back muscles that give you like a V shape. Yeah. Like if you've ever seen like a swimmer, like how they're like cut like a Dorito, but like it's like, yeah, like below, a below and behind your armpit. Those yeah. are your delts. And then your traps are like the muscles on top of your shoulders that connect to your neck. Yeah. Kafka, Kaiju number eight, yeah. does not have either of them. No. He's just a long tube man. Which he absolutely does have in the manga. Yeah, and it makes him look like a guy wearing a suit. It does. It looks like it looks like he is the the seventh or like sixth um five nights at Freddy mascot. Yeah, like he did a big punch against a larger kaiju. Yeah. And I was like, why didn't I feel the power of that? And yeah. it's because he like has this. It's like you said, he is so rounded. Mm -hmm. He just has this large, round, sleek look that makes it look like a dude in a suit, which is kind of annoying. I just, yeah, I'm I'm trying to think of like a visual aid to be like, I wish Kaiju number eight looks like X and I can't really think of it. Like Kaiju number eight to me currently looks like Mob Psycho. Like it looks yeah. close to Mob yeah. Psycho, but like not in the fight scenes. Yeah. You know, it's like, so it's like, you know, everybody has like the rounded faces. It's very like ones are one, the person who makes one punch man and, and uh, Mob Psycho. It's like, has they have that face look? I want like, and this is going to sound ridiculous because Kaiju number eight is, is already better than this show. But like, I kind of want the people to look more like bird mask, bird mask, i.e. Sekai. Bird. Oh, Shangri-La. For I want people to look more like, I want the detailing of the yeah. face. And like, like, even if we went so far as to say, I wanted to look like go, go loser ranger where I was like, I'm getting like sharp pointed. And the reason I think Kikoro Shinomiya looks better than everybody else is one, because her design in the manga is inherently more angular. And that's why Mina Ashiro doesn't look that bad either. But like, like the the angularity being lost from the face just makes everything feel so unserious. And I don't know if that's why one draws like that because his stories are inherently unserious or if that was like done intentionally, but like something about it, like Kaiju number eight isn't a serious story. Yeah. Like we we got them, we got a great chuckle out of your mom when uh, Kafka started peeing out of his nipples. She loved that. Yeah. Dorothy also loved that. I've, I've found out this is Dorothy shit. <laughs> this is like I'm. I'm not. T- I'm kidding. I don't know what this is, but she loves it. Yeah. Kaiju number eight. She eats it up. I know. Yeah. If you thought, if you thought I was chuckling at Konosuba, you should have seen her watching this episode. It's so funny. Every single bit they run. <laughs> she doesn't laugh at anything. Yeah. We saw Bill Burr live. Bill. We went to the comedy. We went to the comedy store in yeah. LA a couple of years ago, and she was like, because she knows I love stand up comedy, and this was back when I was like just getting out of stand up comedy myself, and she's like, hey. Let's go. I got his tickets. Like this really, like I heard this story is super famous. I'm like, oh my God. Uh, yeah, let's absolutely yeah. go. And they're like, uh, there's going to be like a guest, a guest surprise, like a surprise guest, Bill Burr, like Crazy. right after Paper Tiger. Yeah. And I was like, this is, in, I'm rolling laughing. She's like, I just don't get it. <laughs> I just don't get it. And then meanwhile, the old man who's like, like has like a stroke when he sees the, the kai, Kaiju number eight, he's like, oh, and Dorothy's yeah. just cackling. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, this is her fucking thing. That's so So funny. I think after this, we're watching One Punch Man. Yeah. I think so. I think we have to. I do Mob Psycho. Maybe. That's just because I like it more, I yeah. guess. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Fault. But Reagan's so funny. I do love him. There's a Reagan spinoff, I found out. No way. Yeah, it's called Reagan 100. What? Yeah, what? manga. Oh, the manga. Gotcha. Okay, I was like, that is definitely not been an- animated. I mean, I everything's gonna it. be animated. Uh, see, probably. I feel like Mob Psycho, like, animation end, like, it's animation coming to an end left a big hole in my heart. So yeah. if Reagan decided to get him like an anime, I'd be very happy. Let me see. One needs to work on One Punch Man. Yeah. One like one has been like slowing down on One Punch Man's web novel release for like years now, to the point where uh the the animator, the guy who's like drawing his manga, has like started to deviate from the story because he doesn't have that much material to work with. Right. So he's like like fleshing things out and all that. And like some people don't like the direction he's heading. Oh, it's just called Reagan. Nice. Um nice. Interesting. I would love to write a manga about Ronald Reagan getting isekai'd into hell. 
That'd be fucking crazy. Can you imagine it just ends with like Ronald Reagan. It's like it starts like Ronald Reagan getting shot, but he actually dies, and then he just yeah. eats it, isekai into hell. I was gonna say, is that an isekai? Or is that just dying? Yeah, like, no, 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 yeah, yeah, true. It's just him, yeah. just like in the seventh circle of hell, and he has to yeah. work his way up, and he just just keep getting kicked down. Yeah, that'd be fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, I mean, Kaiju number eight. I don't know. I feel like you didn't. I feel like you didn't enjoy the episode. I why? Because multiple times you went like, wow. This is an action-packed episode. There's three times I thought this episode was going to end, and I was like, he wants this episode to end. Just a lot in it. I'm tired. We had a long day. Yeah. But, uh, had a we long had a great night. day. We had a great day. It was fun. Danny, Dan, Sundays are for Nick and Danny nowadays. Uh, yeah, sure We hang out. You can bring Sarah. Bring That's Sarah. That's not the same. That's not what she means by she wants to see me She'll on Sunday. She doesn't want to see you in your element. She doesn't find you being, like, top of your game all sexy. Mm-mm. No. She loves me middle of the game at best. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. She uh, just wants you like in a couch somewhere. Yeah. I'm so like, Dorothy's like, oh, it's not quality time if we're doing something. And I'm, like last night we were like gluing and cutting to get the fucking family feud board together. And I was like, if we're watching TV, we're just sitting there. Yeah. We're just like not talking. What, meanwhile, we're doing arts and crafts. And sure, it's you helping me out with something, but we were chatting the whole time. And I was like, now this, this is quality time. Wait, Dorothy's like, it's not quality time if we're doing something? No, yeah, basically, yeah. Well, so what is something like, like going out and like doing an event? Dorothy needs 12 to 16 hours a weekend of me on a couch with her. Can we like trade girlfriends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hype. Yeah. Sarah doesn't consider that quality time at all. Really? She's like, we got to get brunch. We got to go to do this. We got to go see this. Don't get it in, uh, so don't get it super twisted. She needs a little bit of that every weekend. Yeah. I would say if there's, if there, let's say there's, you get off work at 3 p.m. Friday. Yeah. That gives you nine hours left in the day till midnight. And then you have, Let's say you get 20 hours of free-ish time in the next two days. Yeah. So let's say, let's say like 30 hours free time. Of a weekend, Dorothy needs at least 10 of those to be doing nothing. Yeah. Otherwise, she's going to, like this weekend, I was getting a tattoo all yesterday and then I worked all, t- like all today. Yeah, yeah. So if I work tomorrow, she's going to be livid. Yeah. Like I like it, there's going to, there's going to have to be, I'm going to have to stay up till two o'clock tonight watching something where they're making popcorn, doing something where we're just vegetating. Yeah. She needs that. I will like, uh, that's fine with me. My thing is that I'll like the weekend will come and I'll be like, Oh, I think I'm going to go see Adam like down by Laguna. Is that mm-hmm. cool? And she'd be like, Oh, I just, you know, we, we, I thought we'd do something. We haven't done anything in like a couple weeks. And I'm like, we watched young Sheldon for 40 <laughs> hours this week. <laughs> what do you mean? Did I not put in the work? I've seen you, think it. you want to hear Bazinga <laughs> four times an episode? I watched a whole season of Young Sheldon. Jesus. He's not that young anymore, <laughs> Sarah. He's 17. <laughs> He's through college. Wow. Yeah, we can listen. The dichotomy. We can skip. We can, um, we can we can switch. Yeah, we'll just we'll do a wife swap. Yeah, we'll, well do a wife be, swap. That'd be great for the show. Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> just fucking just like, did you touch her? <laughs> did you did you touch her? <laughs> did you fuck my wife? You son of a bitch! <laughs> Every episode of Wife Swap should have a moment where the husbands go, yeah, did you fuck, fuck my, my wife? Because it's like I feel like it's not not a possibility. Yeah, especially celebrity wife swap. You're telling me fucking Coolio wasn't fucking Gilbert Godfrey's wife? There was celebrity wife swap. Yeah. Holy shit. Gilbert Godfrey and I think Vanilla Ice swapped. And then Coolio swapped with someone. And it was awesome. For those who don't know, Coolio did... What song did Coolio do? I don't know. <laughs> Can't touch this. Do, do, do. Did he? No, that that's was... That's MC Hammer. That was MC Hammer. That's you. And that's I know, MC that's me. Hammer 23. Coolio... Gangsters did he do Gangster's Paradise? Paradise? He did Gangster's Paradise. Coolio did Gangster's Paradise. Been like, on my life, living, living in the Gangster's, Gangster's Paradise. Paradise. That dude uh, was so awful to his wife and children. He was a terrible guy. Oh, no. He's dead now. So that's oh, for yeah, the fuck best. Him. Yeah. Um, he was He's a, in Gangster's Paradise. He was like. Hell. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, whoever's wife he got, some country singer who's mm-hmm. like a stay at home dad and like loves his kids. Okay. Um, but he got that dude's wife and she's like, hold on, we're going to have to do like a 40 minute segment real quick on wife. Love it. Okay, yeah. The, the, <laughs> listen, we had 72 people watching this. The most we've ever had. And we're talking about wife swap. I got so much fucking material right <laughs> so, now. You you know I might, my, my five opening minutes for comic Palooza <laughs> are wife swap based. So 
Coolio gets this woman. This, By the way, this is what Danny will do to you if he ever corners you in a bar. He's like, listen, sit down. To me with two beers for who knows who, just like yelling in your ear. Like, <laughs> and so then Coolio, hold on, he did. And I just like spill a beer on the ground and pick up my phone. Gangster's Paradise, it's like been spent in most of our lives. lives I mean, in the, you know what? You, know, you don't, or I'll do more. <laughs> but um, anyway. He so he gets his country singer's wife and she comes in and she's like, Coolio, you're not spending enough time with me and the kids, <laughs> which is hilarious because it's like it's just objectively not their father. He didn't marry Here you. comes Coolio, he didn't marry you, they're not your kids. <laughs> yeah, but so he's like, the wife's like, you know, <laughs> and then she's like, doing the like interview cam and she's like I just wish Coolio would would be a better husband to me (laughs) he's just like objectively not your husband and he's like and then it does his interview cam and you're like on his side because they're like what is this woman talking about whatever and he's like he's like yeah you know I she she can uh she can have fun. I gave her some money. She can go grocery shopping. Mm-hmm. She can uh she clean the house. And I'm like, oh Coolio. Oh, Coolio, Coolio, no, no. Coolio, no. This is not Coolio, man. Coolio, you met Coolio, you're such moral high ground. <laughs> and he's like, because she's like, I thought we'd do something. He's like, I'm gonna go golf. And he just like bounces. And he's like, she's like, Well, what am I supposed to do? And he's like, 20, 40, 60. Here, we need pot pies. <laughs> And then he leaves. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you telling? Are you are you giving us a slice of what you said to Sarah when you told her to fuck off with 150 dollars? Yes. <laughs> sorry, my wires got crossed. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and so then she's like, <laughs> she's like talking to the kids, and she's like, how do how do you like your father? And the kid is like six, and he's like, I wish Coolio would spend more time with me. <laughs> The six year old. He's like, I wish Coolio would hang out with me more. <laughs> and it's like, all right, cool. Like, fucking just go do something for a week. Like, if it's just, yeah. if just a man showed up in my house as a six year old for a week, I'm like, what the fuck? And like, actually, this yeah. is your line. This is your yeah. line is like, Coolio is daddy now. Yeah. And Jesus they, uh, they go ice skating. I'm wrapping this up, I swear. I love it. They go ice skating. Coolio doesn't know how to ice skate. He's the, a mess on Coolio's the, on just the- falling <laughs> apart. It's this whole thing where she grabs his hand and he's like, yeah. Never mind, it is Coolio. And they just, <laughs> and they just skate away off. Where she's like, she's like, come on, it'll be fun. And he's like, I don't nice skate. I don't do that shit. And she's like, no, it'll be fun. And he's like, on the wall. And he's like, I'm not letting go, bitch. Like, <laughs> just, fingers dragged. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, they swap back. And Coolio's like, yeah, I learned to respect my wife or whatever. And then it's like, and then it fades to black. And it's like, Coolio and Denise have been divorced for four years now. It's Holy like, shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Shout out to Denise. Anyway. And uh, that was and that was wife swap talk. <laughs> Anyways, guy our, two number our eight. New weekly <laughs> Yeah, he's just fucking we just like check. Listen, hey. Hey, babe, I swear I've been spending time with you. We've been watching Wife Swap. I've I know. been learning lessons. Y- you think one of them, like, they swap, and it's like, you're not fucking me enough. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, listen, pipe me down. Oh, there's yeah. definitely been fights. Pipe me down like Brian McCartney did when I was his wife. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, would, I, love the, I would love somebody going back on Wife Swap. All right, outside of that, I don't think there's anything else in, oh, One Republic song. Bad. Hilarious. Yeah, really funny. It's just like, you're, even your mom was like, Wow. I love this. Yeah, this uh, is a bop. Yeah, and we're like, all right, cool. Yeah, that's how we yeah. know. That's how we know. This yeah. is like absolutely driving music. Okay, the only other thing that we watched together is Go Go Loser Ranger. Yeah, the best episode. Which was crazy. Gigantic. Was absolutely nuts. Um, this is the best anime of the season it's so far. It's currently the best anime of the season rather easily, uh, uh, only because I haven't started watching Konosuba yet. Um, he died? He might have died. I Okay, here's my thing. I think, I don't know if he dies. I haven't read this manga. I don't even know if, I, I don't think, it might have a manga. I don't know. But it does. basically what happened to this episode, which was a wild, wild episode, was like, everybody found out that D was a monster immediately. Yeah, he's terrible at his, at his disguise. So bad at it, yeah. where he's like, Suzu, whatever her name is, Suzuriku or something, like found out know. last episode. And then the red haired guy was like, I know you're a monster, I've been listening. And then he was like, but you're recruited anyways. Like we're trying to make monsters and humans live together. And then we just skip to the final episode of the anime where he's fighting the leader of the dragon keepers. Yeah. And he just yoinks one of their divine artifacts away, which you would assume would be the last thing that they did. Yeah. And D might be dead. 
Yeah, it'd be awesome if he's dead. Oh yeah, I'd be stoked. That'd be so sick. I love a fucking like bait and switch. If it's just like now she, the blonde girl's the actual MC. Yeah. Because like she actually has a pretty compelling case to be possibly more interesting. Yeah, that would all be awesome. Uh, I don't think it's true. I think he lost an arm. Mm -hmm. That arm went flying. And I wonder if it can grow a new him. Yeah, so at the end of the episode, you see, like, the Red Keeper goes to get his Divine Artifact back. But, in like, as he goes to grab it, like, the Divine Artifact, like, basically like, blows away into dust. Oh, yeah. And that might, but D, the rest of D's body that wasn't his left arm that was turned into a Divine Artifact got blown away by a Divine Artifact. Yeah, so by I guess. By Blue's Divine Artifact. Yeah. So, like, know. if that, because that part didn't get hit by a divine artifact, that might be enough for him to, like, yeah. reincarnate. Yeah. But it would be sick if Maybe. he was actually dead. That'd because be awesome. getting, like, yeah, a bait and switch, there was this movie back in the day where it was, like, it was a Blumhouse movie or something. Um, the people who made, you ever seen the movie where it's a, I think it's, who's the, who was uh, Neck Grab, uh, Roadhouse, the original Roadhouse. Actor, okay. Actor. Oh, Patrick. Swayze? It may not be Patrick Swayze. Who's the guy who Mel plays? Gibson? Who's the guy who plays Chris Pratt's dad in? Um, Mel Gibson. No, no, no. Chris Pratt's dad in uh, the space, the Marvel one. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell like outfits a car, like a Mustang with like a roll cage, and then he like drives into people and kills them. Oh, death. Proof. Death proof. Death yeah, you proof. know that one. Yeah, yeah. They made the people who made that made another movie where it's just like monsters who impregnate humans, basically. Yeah. Uh, and they're just like snaking their peepees through like like shipping containers, just knocking up humans and making more of them. Crazy movie. For sure. Absolutely wild. In that movie, every single time they introduce a main character, they kill him. Oh, it's nice. like like a sheriff shows up and like protects like the cast of like basically like there's a bunch of like fuck ups that are the real main characters, but every single time a hero shows up, like the sheriff like is like all oh, protection, then he trips and blows his brains out. <laughs> it's a great bit. Yeah. Every single time like somebody it's like somebody some big badass shows up and they immediately accidentally kill themselves. It's awesome. <laughs> that's fun. And so if that's what it is, it's just like this girl just like manipulating all of these monsters, just slowly get all the divine artifacts. Be kind of dope. That would be really, really cool. Also, we were talking about it and we're like, this man has literally sold his identity to every single person. So yeah, he, he's terrible at his job. Um, He's not like, he's like not, not interesting. I yeah. don't hate him, but there's nothing like if he died, I'm not like, what a waste of a great yeah, character. A great character with yeah. interesting powers because he's not going to be strong enough. Yeah. To fight anybody. I am hoping, I think the dialogue's a little weird in it because it's very like, just blunt where it's yeah. just like there was one like string of lines where it's just like it's i'm like, a monster yeah, yeah it's like yeah. i'm a monster and i hate you yeah. and it's like and we're and, and you and i are enemies yeah, yeah and i'm like why is this like actually written like power rangers a little though <laughs> like, i guess yeah kind of it's just like straight out for you yeah like is that the bit but mm. i think that's too easy Meta? yeah i think that's too like easy to be like for the writer to be like oh, it's a Bad because it's the supposed to be uh, it's meant for children. Yeah. Wink. Yeah. Thankfully, speaking of that, I had some of my answer or questions answered. Where yes, there's a lot of blood. Yeah. That dude gets crowbarred so hard. Dude, no, he gets, he gets fucking his, he gets his wig split by yeah. like a four iron. <laughs> Um. So yeah, there's well, that blood. was the first surprising thing. We're like, oh, I thought this guy was gonna be a reoccurring enemy, and he just gets like, like a shot. His brain gets put on the fairway. Yeah. Boy, does it. Um. And then. Yeah, they're, the Rangers are getting a little more, like, psychotic, yeah. which is fun. I want, like, I'm so shocked Green isn't a bigger personality because he's got the, like, shark teeth mm -hmm. mouth or mask, and I was waiting for him to And, be, like, Blue's got all the scars on his face. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Blue's, like, a, you know, a serious brooding type, mm -hmm. which makes sense. I'm surprised Green isn't, like, a Bakugo or, like... I'm, I'm, I'm it's episode three, and we've well, been focusing yeah. on the leader. I'm right. assuming what's going to happen is that like now that the leader's divine artifact is taken, we're going to slowly be like, it's going to be a focus on all of them. Mm -hmm. Right. So like we started where we thought we would end with the leader, which is crazy. And now we're going to work to the other ones possibly who will be like even more corrupt and like morally gray than red. Who's just kind of like, I hate the weak, mm. you know? So really good. And then we were talking about it. And the reason we said, that, Oh, this episode of Kaiju number eight, even though it looks good is only the second best animated episode that we saw this week. 
because what the fuck is Yostar Pictures doing? How much yeah. money do they have from a Zerlane and whatever the hell, whatever the hell else they do? Yeah. Because the animation was gorgeous. They're killing it. There's a whole scene where D gets his arm cut off and it lands on top of a water tank, and then he yanks the water tank off, like in order to like bring his arm back to him. Throws the water tank at Red, who then bats it back at him. Throws the crowbar he uses to like hit it through D's face gorgeously animated scene. Yeah, it's all, all of it's looked great. There hasn't been any moments. There's some like CGI every now and then, but like it works and it's not like, there haven't been any moments where it's just like a still frame shaking yeah. a bit. Yeah, it's been great. This has been a year, I guess two years now, but like a good two years of like nothing, no name studios crushing it with animation between this and Zom 100. Yeah, I was going to say bug films. Yeah, yeah, bug films. Fucking bug films in their eight-month hiatus, but they yeah. still like made a gorgeous-looking anime. Dude, has anyone checked up on them? On like, bug films, yeah, yeah, when they're working on Zom 200, yeah. who knows? Yeah, no, so that's my thing, is like, this is like a real testament, but here's the problem is, and this is something that we probably should have talked about last week, but I don't mm. think I found it in time. Ninja Kamui, the, you know, the last season show where it was like about the ninja who loses his family and goes on this yeah. tirade and killing all these people the last couple of episodes of it, like the beginning episodes were some of the most gorgeously animated fights I've ever seen. The last couple of episodes, apparently either no one was watching or the budget fucking hit the bottom because it's CGI chunky, like Whoa. like personal sized mechs having like a sword fight that looks terrible. Oh. So I think they blew all their money on the first couple of episodes. And then like once you got into the one, like the true one B ones, the episodes look God awful. People like hate drawing mechs yeah. nowadays. Like all mechs are always CGI. I guess they're just hard to draw. Do you think that's because it's the mech genre has kind of like subsided? I think that like, yeah, but I also think it's like, it's just tough to draw. Like if you think of a Gundam, there's so many fucking lines on that thing. Yeah. That it's just like tough. Because all Gundam, like, I mean, prior, like in the 70s and 80s, all Gundam was hand drawn. Yeah. And it was be. until like the 90s until CGI came around. And then yeah. CGI was awful. And you were talking about it where we were watching the Kaiju number eight opening and you're like, oh, I would watch something if it looked like this. Yeah. And I think we are probably three to four years. And I think Demon Slayer is probably the best, like the most indicative argument for this, where it's like, we're three to four years from CGI possibly just taking over hand drawn. Yeah, I mean, I hope that never happens because that's already happened with, like, American animation, like, mm -hmm. Western stuff. I Like, I'd love for there to still be a mix, and I think there always will still be a yeah. mix. But, like, yeah, I think in, like, two to three years, we'll get a CGI anime that isn't, like, it's good, but asterisk, it's, it's CG. good. Yeah, it's good, but the frame rate yeah. is low. It's good, yeah. but yeah, I wish it was drawn. Like, look, yeah. that's what we have right now with B-Stars and- Trigun. Trigun and Kengan Ashura. Yeah. Like, the three greatest CGI projects possibly ever made. Yeah. And everyone's like, good, but it, you know, it is CGI. And, like, once that frame rate goes up, like, I don't know if that's more computational power or more work or something, but I can't help but feel like the CGI is- less expensive than hand-drawn. It is. Yeah. Objectively, yeah. And so it's like, if you could pump out more content and you can do it at a, a quality level that's comparable to hand-drawn, yeah. there's no way companies aren't going to do that. Yeah, but I think... That, and unfortunately, like, the advent of AI will make CGI that's, usage much easier. That's true. Yeah, where it's definitely, like, a downhill battle for or an uphill battle for artists yeah. coming up. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, good show. Good show, Loser Ranger. I, I just, I'm baffled that it, you're so hot on it. But then you're, then again, you're only watching three anime right now. So the fact that that's top of your list isn't that crazy. Yeah, there's nothing crazy happening right yeah. now in anime. You, I didn't have time to watch Windbreaker. It wasn't out of malice. I just simply didn't have time. So it got revealed this yeah. last episode. Like you got to see the top guy. He's got like gray hair. He was like he's planting a farm up top. The voice actor, the Japanese voice actor for him, Gojo. So it's like, I'm like, oh my God, like, yes. it, like, it's kind of like how the main, the main voice actor for Windbreaker is Inosuke. You can't hear it except for like specific moments yeah. where you can kind of hear the, like the Gojo, like, Hey, like the, like, like whatever he does, like his like little, like weird childlike laugh. You hear it in those like breakthrough moments. And it made me so happy to realize it. I was like, Inosuke and Gojo in the show. Uh, outside of that, I just said, this show was so much fun. A brainless, enjoyable watch. How was the fight? 
any fight? Uh, the long haired fight. It was cool. It was like a minute, you know? Yeah. And then there was like a breakdown of like, they're like, oh, this side of the town belongs to Beaufort. But if you cross, if you cross that train track, that belongs to another like 14 year olds, the 18 year olds. Yeah, gang. really? <laughs> and there was like, they started to like butt heads and they introduced like a rival gang. It's kind of fun. Yeah. It's kind of like I said, it's just Tokyo Avengers, but it's fun. I'm sure I'd hate it. Oh, you would. You probably yeah, would. Yeah. It's fun. Um, so outside of that, we, you know, we have some news, we have some flashback. We obviously have our love letters, but Stank and Cody thought up oh, a fantastic a idea for a game today. I don't know what this game is, actually. So I'm going to give you, I'll give you a rundown on it. Don't worry. That's, uh, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. So today me and Danny are looking at the ranker list of the top 100 hottest anime men. We have 15 pairs of anime men and I'm going to read off these pairs and Danny is going to have to tell me which of these two men is higher on the list than the other. So the first pair that we have is Gara and Light Yagami. I'm really, I was so quick to just be like Light Yagami, uh -huh. easy. But Gara's got a face tattoo. I think people think Light is hot. Okay. And Gara's got this weird, every light in the house, hug my lord, the ghosts. What's happening? I don't know. What light is doing that? Uh, all of oh, them. somebody help me. Rather interestingly, all of them. I think that might've been my AC kicking on or a rolling blackout, but we're good. We're still Every light. single light just flickered That was crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, here's the thing. Light, kind of a dork. Mm -hmm. But Gara. Kind of looks like a, a Russian little porcelain doll. What you have to realize is that this is, uh, these are two men that would be attractive to the same type of woman. Yeah. These are two like bad boys. Yeah. I, I say Light Yagami. Light Yagami is higher for you and you are right. Uh, Gara go. 83, Light Yagami 71. Ranker top 100 list. Got you. Yeah. Wow, that fucked with my that, head. That puts you in a pickle. Uh, <laughs> all right. So coming up at number two, yeah, we have Shikamaru Nara and Karapika. Karapika is the is little the Zelda boy. Yes. Up on there. Karapika is yes the blonde the one with blonde the red eye in the one? corner. Yeah. Shikamaru. Okay. Shikamaru is seventy-seven. Karapika seventy-eight. You're right. Obviously, that is, that's closer than I thought it would be. What do you? Shikamaru, well, is it? Have, have you people not seen Shikamaru smoking a cigarette? Shikamaru is so hot. I can't believe Karapika is even on the list. This one's crazy. Okay. Because these are two very different people. I guess actually pretty similar. Uh, number three is Rengoku and Tanjiro. How dare you? Yeah. All right. This is so tough. Because I personally hate what Rengoku looks like. Oh. Rengoku and Tanjiro. Yeah. I personally hate what Rengoku looks like. He looks like a barn owl on fire. Yeah, it's not the hair and the eyebrows is not a flattering combo. He looks like a mascot for both ketchup and mustard. The fact that he's on this list makes me upset a little bit. But I wonder if there's like a sympathy vote happening where people are like, oh, the tragic. It's personality. It's personality. You got to realize it's sometimes personality gets taken into account here. Yes. And he's got the confidence. Yep. I'll go Tanjiro. Tanjiro. So Rengoku, 62. That's Tanjiro, 53. You're right. Let's go. Three for 15, Wow, baby. Tanjiro's low compared to Shikamaru. Yeah, Tanjiro being Being what? like a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, also being, oh my God, like 24 spots below Shikamaru. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. All right, number four, two swordsmen, Sasuke Uchiha, Roro Norizoa, Zoro. This is getting harder. That's a good one. <laughs> That's good. Hundred and I think I think Zoro's boss is like 112 centimeters versus the original E boy. The fact that you know his bust though. Yeah. Feels Two like it's very different types of attractive though. Yeah. Oh man, this yeah. is the hardest. I can't imagine a harder one being on here ever. Uh eh. I can't imagine. I'll have to do Sasuke. Sasuke lower? Yeah. Sasuke 51, Zoro 41. Wow. God. That feels wrong. That feels that feels wrong in my heart. I feel like Sasuke should be lower than, maybe because it's adult Sasuke is such a bad look. Yeah, I'm like stuck in like high school. I'm like stuck in eighth grade because I knew so many girls who were like, that's my fucking boy. Yeah, absolutely. And Zoro, but the thing is Zoro's never had a bad look. Sasuke has. Also adult Sasuke is not good. For audio only listeners, I have alternating black and red painted nails right mm -hmm. now. Like I had to rep my boy Sasuke. You feel like you're truly trying your hardest right now. Atachi versus... Um, 
Sasuke or Zoro would have been interesting. That I actually wonder if Itachi's on this list. Uh, Itachi is not on this list. That's wow. crazy. Um, all right, number five, Aki Anosuke. Two very, very different approaches here. This is the hardest game I've ever played. This one is tough because Inosuke is so pretty, but Aki is also, he's got that Sasuke, he's got he's got Shikamaru mysticism. Yeah, he's got Sasuke energy. Here's the thing. I'm gonna go Aki. Mm -hmm. If it's not Aki, I'm never going Sasuke energy again. Yeah, that's fair. He's just like the bad the girls who want a bad boy don't have I mean Shikamaru being high 70s is crazy. Inosuke's got like no attractive qualities other than his muscles. He's He's ripped. So obnoxious. He's pretty as hell. Yeah, he's, so pretty. I guess so pretty, pretty that he was the only one they could convincingly make into a woman in the entertainment district. But not in like a female gaze way. I, I like he looks like a chick. Some people like oh, 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 fucking listen, women don't listen. like women. Uh, I, I, I might get crucified for this take. Have you seen K-pop groups? You put a wig on any member of a K-pop group, and that is a pretty lady. <laughs> yeah. They are all soft, very feminine-looking men, and that billions of women slide so. off seats for them. Aki. Aki's your answer? I don't think Chainsaw Man's popular enough for it. <laughs> what is You're it? You're right. Aki 34. Inosuke 35. God. Oh, I'm right. Yeah, you're right. Let's go. You're right, but that is that is great. Neck and neck. That is, I guess, listen, pretty people. Pretty wow. people. All right, this one is a good one. Kind of. Kind of. I don't, I feel like these two shouldn't be close because I feel like one of these guys is top, top. Okay. Like, like, like top 10. Uh, number six is Howl and Sung Jin Woo. Howl. You would think, right? Yeah. Absolutely. 33 for Howell. Sun Jin Woo, 44. You're right. 100%. 33 for Howell. I know, is crazy. Way too that high. That much higher above Aki. Like, I, I, I like, Anosuke being two from Howell yeah. is disrespectful to Howell. <laughs> that is, that is a, that man is hot as fuck. These people have not heard the dub. Clearly. No. Oh, my. Christian, Christian yeah, Bale. Christian Bale. Uh, all right. So we got that uh, one, though, that previous one came down to popularity like alone i was like how many people are voting for sung jin woo just based off solo levelings and he's not he's just so he's so so long and tall he's too pointy so pointy uh number uh number seven is chuya nakahara and kilowa that's that's bungo straight out right i know okay it's chuya Chuya. Akilo was like an 11 year old. Fully, fully a 12 year old. Yeah. Fully a 12 year old. Uh, Chuya, 31. Kilo, 28. What are we doing? What are we, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? All right. That's, that's wrong. Uh, so huh? that's how many, how many wrong? Is what that? am I? Timothy Chalamet? Cause what are we doing? What are we doing? What am I? Timothy Chalamet? Because this chocolate makes you the Duke of Iraqis. Uh, number eight. Oh, this is a tough one. Number eight. Nanami Kento or Suguru Ghetto. Uh, that's two uh, titans uh, two titans here's the thing it's you, not well here's the thing you gotta know when this list was made because if it's what? after if this list was made after nanami grabbing the ponytail you I can't mean, tell me when the list was made. i don't know when the list was made so that's that, that would be crucial information but we don't know womp womp i know womp um, indeed. <laughs> here's the thing uh-huh. here's why that's a great matchup Gojo's not involved. If it was either of them or Gojo, mm. I'd go Gojo for sure. Interesting. Probably the right choice. Or who's the ghettos? The one who gets killed by Gojo. Yeah. It, uh, no, yes, that's Toji. Yeah. Toji gets killed and ghetto also gets killed by Gojo. He gets both. Ghetto's not hotter than Toji. Ghetto's not hotter I'll than Toji. Right that's fair. Well, once again, that's that's male gaze versus female gaze. Ghetto is incredibly female gaze. Toji is very male gaze. Yeah. It's the muscles. But Ghetto's got like long hair. He wears flowy clothing. He cares about Gojo. I'll do Nanami. You're going to go with Nanami? It's wrong, but That's probably who I would have gone with. Um, Nanami is 18. Ghetto is 13. So you're wrong. 13, 13. is criminal activity. Eight. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But here's the thing. Toji is hotter than both of them. But you got to take this into account here. That means female gaze is getting you lower on this list. You got to take that. You got to take that into you with the next rounds here. This is crazy. Uh, next up, we have, oh, this one's, this one's silly to me. This one's silly to me, but nine, Yuji Itadori, Sukuna. Sukuna. Same body, but Sukuna is the hotter version yeah, of Yuji, yeah. right? Sukuna's, it's like Yugi or Yami. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like one of them has like drip and is like reads as an adult and the other is like very much a 15 year old. Why does this keep happening? Horrifying. That is horrifying. Uh, UG 11, low. 
22 spots below Howell? I'm not watching Konosuba because you fucking morons no. don't know who's hot. That is in Yuji at 11 is criminal. <laughs> That's insane. What was Zoro? Like 36, Yeah, right? he was like 30. Let's see. Zoro was 41. Sasuke was 51. Shikamaru was 77. What's Sukuna? Sukuna must be one. Five. Let's go for me. What? What's happening? What? What's in the water? I, it's got to be recency bias. It's 1,000 because Ranker, you're allowed to vote on it, and it, it's constantly shifting. And so this is this is 1,000% recency bias. I can't put the fate of my next week in the hands of these imbeciles. But listen, this is, just, this is literally what the Family Feud episode was. It's just you're realizing you do not share the same opinion as most anime fans. All right. Number 10, Asamu Dazai. Uh, Osamu, Osamu, Dazai. Osamu Dazai and Kakashi Hatsuke. No, 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 no. Is Dazai the captain? Oh. Is he the one who's in charge? Who's got the book? Uh, Is he the white haired one with the book? No. No, no that's not, not Dazai? No. Dazai's the one. You didn't see him in the one episode we watched. Okay. Here's the thing. Uh huh. Who's using Ranker? Is it women? Well, think Is about it gays. Is it boys? Think about who's think about who's been low on the list up until this point. Those are the three genders: Ghetto, women, yeah, gays, and boys. Women, gays, and boys. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby! There's no they them's on there. Mm. <laughs> That's the gay. That's the gay. He's got them. Them's the gays. Them's baby. the gays, baby, and them's the breaks. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. God, you'd think Kakashi because he's so much more popular. I mean, we only have one bulge. Like, we only have yeah. one person drawn with a very obvious bulge in this room, and that's and Kakashi. Kakashi. But Bunga, K- K- Naruto's more popular. Yeah. But I'd say, like... But Bungo Stray Dog's fan base is hornier. Is hornier. Yeah. At most, like, 50% of the Naruto fan base is horny. Yeah. 90% of the Bungo fan base is horny. Yeah. So you got to think, is is the Naruto fan base at and least... And Sasuke failed me, but Shikamaru didn't. Well, Shikamaru also came in at 77. And 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 Sasuke was the 51. And Chuya was pretty high. Chuya was... Chuya. Or like pretty low. Chuya was 31. Dazai. You're going, you're going with Dazai? Yep. yep. Dazai, three. Three. Oh my God, the Bungo Stray Dogs is the horn. That's the wow. horniest fan base known to man. Kakashi Let's Atsuke, go. seven. Bungo Horn Dogs, oh baby. Oh my God, you're playing the game. Bungo Horn Dogs. You're playing the game. I can't, I, I can't help it. I can't help but respect it. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, Toji is on the list. Okay. Uh, number 11 is Toji Fushiguro yeah. and Lloyd Forger. This is daddy energy. I'm this is the actu- clashing of daddy energy. I'm actually going to go bald from this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah these, are, these are all the men that we talk about. This is so stressful. Toji? Yep. Or Lloyd. Yes. I gotta. Th- Here's the thing: you're gonna go be like, "Oh, JJK is a bigger fandom." It may not be. I know. Spy and family Lloyd- is huge. Lloyd's such a daddy. Yeah. Lloyd is so is Toji. Such a father. But he's also. Oh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We have to take into account. Lloyd's a good father. Lloyd's genuinely a good. Toji's father. all right. So like, Lloyd is the father people want. Toji is like the father people need, you know? Toji is like a daddy. Yeah. Lloyd is, is a father. Literally a father. And that's the thing is those are those are two different types of attraction to two different kinds of people. I can't risk God, they could both be one, for all I know, <laughs> with these fucking chimpanzees these, voting. These, like, <laughs> these fucking horny chimpanzees. Oh Nick. I know, it's tough. It's a tough one. All right. You're the one who wanted to play this game. I don't want to play this game. My gut reaction would have been, I would have fired off one immediately. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to tell you who I would have voted, but I'll tell you right now. I'd Lloyd. Crazy. Not who I would have gone with. Toji is eight. Okay. Lloyd is six. Let's go. I would have gotten it wrong. I would have guessed what I would have gone with Toji. I was the man for this game. Holy shit. You absolutely were. You are way, you're, you're way more tapped into me. This one makes me a little uncomfy. Uh, oh. Karma Akabane, mm-hmm. Aaron Yeager. Why? Oh, Karma. Karma. Like, Assassination yeah. Classroom, redhead Karma Akabane. Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. I, you know what? I think you might be wrong. I, really? I, dude, Assassination Classroom. It's the same thing. How many people who watch Attack on Titan are horny for Aaron? That's true. That's How many fair. people who watch Assassination Classroom are horny for Karma? That's true and fair, but I feel like Assassination Classrooms, don't you smile at me. Oh, it's horny. 
but it's not popular. Party fandom. It's not popular. It's the same thing as Assassination Classroom. The Venn diagram between Assassination Classroom and what's that? Oh, what's that anime that was like? They had like four games, and uh, they made an anime based off of it. Oh God. Persona? Not Persona. Um, and there's the bear. There's the bear that split down the Dang middle. Danganronpa. Danganronpa. That's the same fan base. Uh, all right. So Karma is twelve. Aaron. Who did you say? You said Aaron. Aaron. Aaron sixteen. Wow. 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 How many wrong is that? I don't. Know. Is that four? This is neck and neck. Let's get a. Let's get a. Let's get a, a test here. That would be. So far, I've had. I've gotten eight out, out of fifteen. 15. Okay, wrong. there's three left. That means I need all of them. You know, you need, I need two. You need one. You need two. You need, I need two. two. Yeah. All right. Thirteen is you know, as in you know from Black Clover. Uh, I know. And Shoto Todoroki. Shoto Todoroki and you know. Similar vibes. This is this is a fucking list and a half. I just here's what my, a curation. Did it, you know what? Honestly, hats off to Stank. Killed it. Yeah. Killed it. This is impressive. I'm going to go Todoroki. You're going to go Todoroki? Yeah. I, feel like I feel like it's the right choice. You know it's 42 oh, way yeah. up there. There's no way Todoroki's that high, right? No way. 48. <sighs> oh, no! I have to get two. You have to get two. It's down to the what? wire here. I get it, but uh, come on, my hero fans. Uh, Everyone hates you for being so horny. You figured they would vote harder, especially for Todoroki. I ba- I Bakugo's got to be like nine or something. Bakugo's probably very high on the list. Is that is Todoroki the first MHA character we've gotten? I think yeah. he is. Uh, 14. Oh, this is this is two sides of different coins. This is as as night and day as it literally gets. Crollo Lucifer. Who? Uh, Le- Crollo Lucifer from, from Hunter Hunter. Uh, is he up there? Is he? He should be. Let me look it up. He's an absolutely massive character. Uh, Croso Lucifer uh, versus Minato Namikaze. That is. Who that are is either? Oh, Minato, Minato is Naruto's, Naruto's father, dad? and Crollo is like the Tumblr final boss. Like he's Tumblr boy final boss. Minato is like captain of the football team. Like this is as this is as polar opposite as it gets. That is a great pull from Stank. I don't know. This I get so, it. This I get so it tough. with this guy. You get, oh yeah, I, I absolutely get it. Get it. I'm telling you right now, there's a definitive way He's I would He's got the vote. little cross. Yeah. And I keep being like Naruto's you would, you, popular. You know what? You do a good Krolo cosplay. Yeah, yeah. You right. have his hair. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Oh, they would, people would eat it up. That's your next thirst trap photo. This is so tense. Yep. I need this. You need this one. Um, Krolo. Krolo is... 55. I'm fucked. I'm boned. I'm cooked. Minato is 61. Let's go. I can't believe we're coming down to the wire here. Last one. Oh my God. Last one to see who wins. Danny currently has nine correct. If he gets this one right, I do homework. If he gets it wrong, he does homework. All right. 15. Yukihira Soma. Food Wars. Neji Huga. This seems like a trick. I, do you think so? This seems like a trick. Do you think so? It's got to be Neji. Okay. But 110% of Food Wars is, is horny. Horn, but not for Soma. I know. For Soma's dad, maybe. But not for Soma. You know? It's stank. Here's the thing. Somebody we know made this. Yeah. So it's like there can be deviousness afoot. Because it's got to be Neji. It's, it, it, there's no feasible way in my mind it's Soma. Yeah. And if it is, everything I know is wrong because women, like it was like, it was a very like not popular opinion to thirst over Neji, but it was a not popular opinion that everybody had. Like yeah. everyone was like, oh man, like he, cause he was, he was darker and edgier than Sasuke somehow. Yeah. He but was my favorite character. He was great. Yeah. And Soma's so nothing. He's got, he brings nothing to the table except food literally. Yeah. But here's the thing. Naruto characters, right? The yeah. lowest- the lowest Naruto character was Kakashi, obviously. And he yeah. was like eight or something. Yeah. Everybody else has been pretty high on the list. Yeah. Minato, 61. Uh, uh, Sasuke was in the 50s. It has to be a trick because Stank made But I don't it. think either of these guys are going to be that high. That's my Yeah. Opinion. I don't think it's going to, like, neither of these guys are top 10 characters. No. I hate this. I, I'd say go with your gut. Uh and if your gut's telling you that Stank is trying to throw a 15, a 15 curveball, I'd say listen to that. Let me see. 
I'll do Soma. You're going to go with Soma. I'm going to go You want to lock that in? I'm going to give, because this is this is a big question. I'm going to yeah. give you a chance. I'm locking it in. You're locking Soma I'm locking in. I don't in. know the answers, by the way. Okay. I, I don't, I don't, I figure it out when you do. You're That's locking lock. in Soma. Yeah. Soma is 72. And Neji? Neji is 75. You did it. <laughs> I outwitted each and every one of you cucks. I'm not even mad. That was incredible to watch live. What that, a game. Was incre- that was incredible to watch live. Holy shit. Wow. Wow. I feel like we had our slumdog wow. millionaire moment there. That was crazy. Holy shit. Good job. Wow. I'm Good retiring. Job. I'm never doing a game again. They're all yours now. That was wildly impressive. I don't think I, I think I probably would have gotten seven to eight. Because wow. I think I think I go two male gaze. Yeah. I think I think I think a lot of that was you gotta think about who's voting on ranker. And yeah. it's not shown in punch, especially for the hottest men. It's not my fan base. It's not the way that I think. For sure. That was very impressive. Huh. My heart, in like a few minutes, my heart will start beating again. Yeah, you were just like, <laughs> yeah, you've like literally shut down to yeah. nothing. What well, am I watching? I don't know. I What if I've been like, you gotta watch this. I'll think on it. Maybe I'll come up with it by the end of the episode. Okay. Um. If, if, I've, if there's anything that I've been being like, man, Nick's gotta watch this. Let me know in the chat. Yeah, um, let us know. Let us know when. I don't want to do rest of B stars. I don't want to. That's what I was gonna say. I know, but I don't want to waste it on just another, more B stars. Yeah, yeah, because best case scenario, I I see that as like you could make me watch something that you haven't seen. I could do yeah, like a fucking canary in a coal mine. Yeah. I was like, I don't think this is gonna be good. Check it out for me. You could I could gleep near. Yeah, yeah gleep you put me on gleep near. You come in. You fucking you're like I did. I watch them. Like I didn't. Uh, yeah, Who cares? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we don't, don't give talk a shit. about yeah. it. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't want to do B stars because I feel like you'll come in and yeah. it'll be either we- identical to the last B stars episode, like mm. video, or we talk about it for like two minutes and then it's done. When we kick to love letters. Tell us if there's anything that Danny has, like, on top of sending questions. Um, tell us if there's anything. You haven't seen Banana Fish, have I you? I haven't seen Banana Fish. They might do that. Okay. That'd be crazy. You can lock in your answer. Lock in your answer during um, Love Letters. Yeah. So, uh, my flashback of the week, I got a big flashback. Yeah. Uh, it's that the Spy X Family movie came out and that we didn't get invited. <laughs> <laughs> Spy Family movie came that out. That can't be the flashback every time. Uh, is, 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 yeah, uh, we'll uh, never go to one. No, because uh, I want people to understand that we are we are them. We are yeah. right there. We are men of yeah. the people. <laughs> yeah. Boy, oh boy, do we hold very little sway. There was a, a anime huge reveal in LA. Uh, Stella went. Uh, she looks great. She looked like she had a wonderful time. We didn't even, uh, you know what's crazy? Craziest bit about all of it. I got a connection at Crunchyroll like two and a half weeks ago. And she was like, I was like, hey, I want to get my podcast sponsored. I want to I wanna get this new page sponsors. I want you guys to be like leading sponsors on everything. And she was like, I only control inviting influencers to events. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I'd like to do that too. And she was like, ah. And then it was like, she was like, we got a, we got a spy family thing coming up in a couple of weeks. She was like, I'll see if I can get you on. We might be booked up. And wow. I was like, who is it filled with? Who have you <laughs> filled the day? Like, oh, I'm sorry. Aaron, Aaron Donald's coming. Like what's going on? Yeah. Who is filling the seats? <laughs> and so, I mean, apparently Stella and she yeah. absolutely deserves it. We'll She's see fantastic. if we can squeeze in biggest Naruto YouTuber on the platform. Yeah, it's like fucking like I do a million subscribers related to anime on YouTube. Like fuck me, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, no, it looks great. The mo- I wanted to bring Dorothy cause she loves spy family. So I mean, Dorothy are probably just going to go see it in theaters, but yeah. she likes getting dressed up. So yeah. hey, who knows? Maybe I'll, she has a, oh, she does have a, your cosplay that I made. Oh, true. You're a big fan of. Yeah. You big love fan, that big fan of she's perfect for it. She's five ten. She has black hair. Yeah. And, yeah. She's awesome for it. Um, yeah, so Spy Family came out with a movie. It looks awesome. I'm going to go see it in a couple days. If you like Spy Family, you should go see it. I don't know why I'm doing promo for it. We didn't get invited. Yeah, true. Fuck it. Don't fuck see it. Actually, yeah, fucking don't see yeah, it. Yeah, tank that series. Tank that, yeah, fucking take Spy Family off the airs, even though Dorothy loves it. Uh, do you have flashback news? Yeah, I'm substantiating it real quick. Oh, yeah? We're doing a little, we're doing a little filler content on it? It might not be true. Um, Studio Periot's president uh, has hinted that Boruto and Black Clover will be coming back as seasonal anime. That's huge. Yeah, it's huge. I can't believe that wasn't your news. That's, wait, what? Yeah. What? Black Clover and Boruto will be seasonal. Um, first off, it needs to be. Um, Studio Peria president. Um, Just look up like Boruto seasonal. 
Let's see. Uh, yeah, Boruto. Uh, Mich- uh, Michiyuki Hanma, president of Studio Parrot, confirms possible return to seasonal anime. Because here's my thing. That makes a lot of sense uh, because Boruto is, Boruto's anime is plagued with filler. It's 75% filler. Everybody hates it. Yeah. Uh, the canon stuff is actually really, really good. This is a crazy possible switch for the industry because if, yes, I understand. I love you. But Black Clover has ever since a couple of chapters ago switched to a quarterly release schedule and they're only putting out 25 page chapters. So it's like every three months we get a chapter of Black Clover, basically a chapter and a half of Black Clover. And we're only seven, eight chapters from the end of Black Clover, like possibly like Asta is currently fighting the final bad guy, Mm. but seven chapters at a three month clip means that Black Clover will not be over for two and a half years. That's not the end of the world because there's a lot of, I know he wants attention right now. There's a lot of, there's a lot of (laughs) Nick's dog. keeps putting out his paw to hold Nick's hand. Yeah. Wagyu. Come here, baby. Come here. What? He just just wants his hand held. Up now he's in the seat. Yeah. He's in the seat. God, what a guy. This is the best dog I've ever seen in my life. And I said that about Neutron. This is why he's my favorite. He, um, this one's better. Yeah, I know. Uh, so Black Clover is now like three years out from actually being finished at any yeah. point. And so, but the anime has been gone for years. The anime has been gone since like 2018, 2019. And it, the reason that the anime has been gone for so long is because they did no filler. They did like three episodes of filler, all of which were really good. And then the pacing was just new gen pacing, but weekly basis. Yeah. So they did a hundred, they did 170 episodes. And because of that, the animation is lacking in points. Uh, and it gets really good after the animation gets good after a hundred, like episode a hundred. Um, but it's just, it's this, it's this kind of issue where they're like, oh, we ripped the manga. Now we have to wait for the manga to catch back up. And them coming back with seasonal means one, it's going to look good. And two, they're going to give the manga more time to finish. Cause they have, I mean, they're just starting the dark triad arc, which is like 80 chapters long. They have years of like anime to adapt. And they just did the movie, which was like one of the most popular movies that Netflix released in a long time, at least animated wise. Boruto coming back seasonal is also huge because at the end of Boruto, like episode fucking God knows 280 or something, which uh, they adapted 65 chapters in 280 episodes. They like tease that like, you know, Boruto gets like, it's like Boruto basically like, Borto dies, basically, but he, he comes back to life. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they just ended with that. Them coming back seasonal would be huge, but everyone was talking about recently, like, oh, Borto's not coming back to like 2028. If they switch to seasonal and it's like, oh my God, Bleach is seasonal. Yeah. Borto, okay, Naruto is seasonal. Yeah. One Piece could feasibly become fe- like seasonal, which would be yeah. crazy and also really good considering the fact that Oda is now releasing chapters at his slowest ever pace. Yeah. It'd, it'd be huge. It, at that point, it's just One Piece being seasonal. Or it's just One Piece not being seasonal. And like, what, Dr. Conan or whatever? Detective <clears throat> Conan? Yeah, it's like, it's like um, yeah, D- Detective Conan. And yeah. then, uh, what's the fucking blue dude? Gintama? No, not Gintama. Um, not Doro. Hey, Doro. Uh, we did this like last week. Doraemon. Doraemon. Yeah. Doraemon, yeah. Like 5,000 episodes in. But those are yeah. children shows. Yeah. So they don't need to be like, there's no like complicated fights happening yeah. in De- 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 no, Detective Conan or it, Doraemon. Everything should be seasonal. Yeah. Like, it'd be so hype if it were. Yeah. And end of news. Yeah. And that hype? That is crazy. That's yeah. huge news. Yeah. And I'm so excited for that because to see Boruto animated in its all its glory because the manga is carrying it right now because the anime has been gone for a year, a year and a half, and everyone's like, well, that's it, Borto's canceled forever. If it came back seasonal, it would make sense because uh, to see what Studio Parrot is doing with the Thousand Year Blood War arc, it's, it's some of the best animation out, period. And it's really the only thing carrying TYBW as it stands right now because the story is so... Yeah. Meh. So bleach. It's so, <laughs> yeah. it's so bleach. And so it's like to have that come as seasonal would be absolutely massive. That's huge news. Yeah, maybe. Uh, my best boy is John Weary, specifically John Weary. Who is that? JJ Kate's official English translator. Uh, because did I send you this? You did. You did yeah. send me this, and I was like, that because is a, that guy doesn't know that guy either Japanese or English. Straight up sucks at his job, and it's hilarious. <laughs> Listen, John Weary is the official English translator for JJK, and for some of you who possibly aren't caught up with JJK or don't read the manga, you won't know this, but um, I I don't read the official releases of JJK mostly because of the like because one the leaks come out first, and two because of this. The JJK official translator, John Weary, has no god, no goddamn idea what he's doing. He's awful at his <laughs> job, and it's hilarious. He has no concept of either language he's yeah. supposed to know. <laughs> so there's a scene in where Gojo gets asked if he would fight, uh, if he fought like 20-fingered Sukuna, if he would win. 
Uh, and they're like, oh, if you fought full-powered Sukuna, who would win? And Sukuna's like, or Gojo's like, I would probably struggle a little bit. It would be a tough fight. But then he goes, nah, I'd win. One of the most famous moments in the entirety of the JJK manga, anime, anything. John Weary just translated it as, no. <laughs> like, would you, like, would you, like, oh, I'd struggle a little bit, but then, no. That's yeah. it. Which is massively different yeah, from when, nah, I'd win. It's the reverse of what Gojo yeah. was supposed to, like, it's the reverse of what Gojo was trying to say. So the fan translators for JJK are actually really good. And because JJK is the most popular manga on earth, if you're a good fan translator, you can make a good amount of money getting those leaks out early, getting like paged, like clinks, all that. Like yeah. people do it on Twitter. People do it in discords, Reddit, yeah. all that. Like there's money in translating this shit and then putting it out and getting ads on top of it. So the fan translators are really good. Yeah. John Weary, who's tr now translated 270 ish chapters has no idea what he's doing. And that is King shit. Yeah. That is, I lied on my resume. I got a job I'm unqualified <laughs> yeah. for and I will not fucking learn. Well, it's funny. Cause allegedly there are multiple instances where John weary just writes the opposite yes. of what these fans, tra fan translators are claiming is the intended meaning. Yep. And so it's like, at that point, it's like, what is Canon? Mm -hmm. Because technically it's canon that Gojo thinks he wouldn't beat Sukuna. They went back and changed it, but yeah. So the second you have to do that, once, uh -huh. get a new guy. Fire him. Right? Fire him immediately. There's that's, so many people who speak. That's gigantic. Like, it's like, not like Japanese is some, like, it's like Navajo. It's not some lost language. Yeah, There's millions Greek. of people who speak both Japanese and English, and there's probably hundreds of thousands of people who can read and write both. So, yeah. like, we can get a translator who can do this job. Hi, hello. <laughs> Um, so absolutely hilarious. I love that story. I've just been reading the fact I probably haven't read an official release of JJK in 20, 30 chapters. Like I just, because John Weary's so bad at his job and when he does get the translation, right, when he technically conveys the right message, it's, it's like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Hello. What's happening for our audio? Uh, only? Wagyu is eating my ears is kind of what he does when he gets anxious about things. And he's mostly anxious about the fact that baby. he is not sitting comfortably. Look at this baby. Uh, he's a big old baby. Um, so, so, um, what was I going to say? Oh, even when he does translate things correctly, he literally will say it in the most complicated way possible. And JJK is already such a fucking nightmare to understand that like having somebody translate it into the English that you understand and then like maybe not be saying it right. And also if they are saying it right, have it be convoluted as hell is always awful. Yeah. So that's hype. Yeah. Um, Who's your best boy? My best boy is Q Hayashida. Okay. Who is the mangaka of Doro Hey Doro. Okay. Uh, because, my God, is she an outstanding artist. Doro Hey Doro is gorgeous artwork. I, so I went to Barnes & Noble the other day, picked up two manga because they're having a sale. One, uh, one, buy one, get one half off. Uh -huh. An all paper manga. Yeah. Um, oh, that's not, a great deal. Great deal. Great deal. Phenomenal deal. So I picked up Doro Hidoro, uh, chapter one, and uh, what, like, she has a new one out. Oh, really? Called, like, Die Something. Did she do Odd Talk Taxi, or is that somebody different? That's not her. Okay. But, um, just, like, and I was gonna make Doro Hidoro my best boy, but I haven't started it yet. I've mm. just flipped through, like, the art. Mm. The art's just, like, crazy. Even the, co like, the covers and the detail yeah. on, like, their faces. Oh, yeah. If you have, if you've seen the anime and haven't looked at the manga, look at the manga. Like, just Google image search Dora Hey Dora manga. It's, like, some of the coolest artwork I've ever seen. The blacks. There's so much deep, dark yeah. black usage. And it's, like, so gritty. It's so edgy. And it just, if the story is good, if the story holds up, it will just further cement the fact that the best manga are written by women. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ike. Sailor Moon. Sailor uh, Moon. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Dora Hey Doro. Uh, Madoka Magica. Madoka Magica. Beastars. Beast Beastars is a woman. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. They're just all, they're just the best ones. Yeah. Anytime I'm like, God, the dialogue is like blowing me away. Like, this is such, like, the emotion is so much more human than I find in a lot of manga. Mm -hmm. And I look it up, it's a woman. Yeah. Other than Binland Saga, that's the only outlier where the emotion, like, you're like, oh my God, this is like the gold standard, how like the emotional spectrum that we should be having in anime yeah, and manga. And it's a man. <laughs> that's the only instance. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah.
That's so interesting. But also, it makes a lot of sense. Like, women have a better understanding of men's emotional spectrum than a lot of men do. Especially mangakas, who yeah. are usually, like, indoor men. Yeah, so yeah. that's crazy. Um, I actually, I need to repick up Dora Hedora. I, wa- I read, like, the first couple of chapters, and then I dropped it. And I really need to get back into it's it. It's not on any of these apps, which is why I bought it. When such I, a fucking, it's such a shame. I'm I know. Such, I'm such a phone scroller. I can, uh, I'll like give it to you when it's done. Mm-hmm. I also, you got to read Gotcha Kuda because it's fucking gotcha awesome. Gotcha Coochie. Gotcha Coochie. You got it. The first volume is so sick. Is that the one with the, 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 the red haired kid and the silver haired girl? No. No. No, that's Gog, like something Goku. Goku Gotcha or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> either, Every time I open the show either, to jump app, there's like a new chapter. Either of it. Gotcha Coochie or Goku's Gotcha Rye. Yeah, go, go, yeah, yeah, we're not butchering these names at all. Uh, but Gotcha Kuda is phenomenal in the first volume. The mm. artwork is outstanding. The premise is like, it, like I guarantee it's you gonna, actually did pretty good. Uh, Goku Raku guy. Goku Raku guy. Yeah. yeah. The uh, Gotcha Kuda has a similar art style to that. Mm-hmm. I like, I guarantee, I promise you, if this gets like a studio wit or MAPPA anime adaptation, mm-hmm. it's going to be the next Demon Slayer. Really? Like it will ge- like genuinely, and I've never said that about anything else before. Uh-huh. It will be the next big, like you'll see it everywhere. And mega, mega like brings a bunch yeah. of new wave of people into anime. It's just got like stellar character designs, like character designs where you see it and you're like, I could see this on merch everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, stellar character designs, pretty cool power system. It's like an item based power system where gotcha, gotcha Kuda, gotcha Kuda. So gotcha, like G A C H I A K U T A. Gotcha Kuda, gotcha. Yeah. Um, cool power system where it's like item based. So oh, like, the guy with the big old gloves. Yeah, yeah big yeah, gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's cool. It's the uh, characters in this world, it's like trash punk. Mm-hmm. And there's like a society above the trash and then a big pit where all the trash gets thrown into. Mm-hmm. And the main kid uh, gets thrown in that pit and he has to survive and it's just like Mad Max fucking wasteland. Yeah. But characters down there have like, there's this like power where items have like souls. It's mm-hmm. very soul eater. Items have souls. And if you like, attuned to their soul and everyone can only attune to one you can turn that item into like a crazy weapon so he meets this like badass hot as fuck dude Mm -hmm. who uses an umbrella as a weapon oh i saw him in one of the i saw him in one of the covers when i I googled it yeah it's sick it's just like umbrella with knives essentially this guy sick maybe i can't tell long hair with braids no not him okay but there's dude oh this guy that guy yeah yeah yeah. that so that character design is sick it rips it's so good i'm gonna bring the volume next time i come here but uh it's like the sick umbrella with like knives it transforms and the main kid the item that he is like attuned his soul to Mm. are gloves which allows him it like activates the gloves power which is anything he touches turns into a crazy weapon oh so he fucking gamed the system nice you got steam but it's so yeah he has 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 copy yeah yeah um but it's so cool. It's That's so it. un- like I can't talk. Maybe I'll, is it on Shonen Jump? No. Fucking god. It's also it. it pissed me off because like eleven volumes have been trans or have been made and mm-hmm. only one has been put out in English. Yeah. And like they'll come out in English every like four months, mm. and it's like, fucking, how tough could this be? I literally just caught up with Kaiju Number Eight and like me and Dorothy read for a half hour before we go to bed, and I just like sit there and read manga while she reads her murder novels. Yeah. And I now need another manga to pick back up. I think. I mean, I'm getting caught back up on Kagurabachi. I just like part of me doesn't give a shit anymore. Um. Yeah. But outside, I forgot of, about that one. I'm surprised you're catching up. I on just it. I, like I'm like I was like eight chapters back. Yeah. I was like I'll catch up, and then I started reading. I was like I don't. Yeah, really give boring. A shit. It's fine. It's so fine. Yeah. Um, I'll bring the volume. So now we have gotten to the part of our show where me and Danny do love letters, which is where we pull our live audience to ask us questions that we answer live. So if you guys want to watch the podcast live and ask me and Danny questions that we answer for you on the pod, please become a member over on YouTube or on Patreon for either four ninety nine or five ninety nine a month to become either Team Nick or Team Danny. So Daniel. Oh, you also get two hours of additional content every single month of me and Danny play video games. Oh my so. God, to- Ghoul Tucker asks, if you could combine two anime power systems, which would you combine and why? You got Do you one? Do I have to go first? Yeah. I would combine Soul Eater with Hunter Hunter. 
I would love the specificity of the Hunter Hunter universe. So we got enhancers, we got specialists, we got transmuters. I would love how complicated and involved that power system is applied to being able to turn people into weapons. So you yeah. can turn, a, like if you can, you have a resonance with your Meister or your soul weapon based off whether you're an enhancer. And then that is shown in the weapon you have and you're able to build out new abilities with your weapon based off the kind of like Nen specific, like specific specificity you have yeah yeah dude soul eater i always forget how sick soul eater's power yep. system is where one dude is just a weapon yeah and that's the thing is like soul eater like yeah like i turn you into like guns or yeah. i turn you into a scythe or i yeah. turn you into a chainsaw or something it's like that's awesome for like a shorter manga but to like have characters that can build on like the abilities of these guns or build on the ability yeah. of the scythe because i'm a transmuter or an emitter or an enhancer i thought would be really really cool yeah so like or getting like additional weapons or like upgrades to your weapons kind of like digi like divi digi like digi evolution yeah digi yeah. like digimon evolution yeah, yeah would be awesome interesting like to see kid death's weapons turn from pistols to like assault rifles yeah would be kind of sick dude soul leader is so much smarter than i think people realize because it's like a friendship based power system yeah. like i love that it's like you get you get your partner and that partner turns into a weapon but that weapon only works if they like you yeah and that makes for such hype moments because at first you're like, that's kind of stupid. But then it's like they're vibing yeah. and like they're reaching their character arcs and you're like, oh, fuck, they just made up. And then they're like, demon slice. And I'm like, oh, fuck, they just killed the guy. That's the biggest sense we've ever seen. Yeah. So that that's a good one. Yeah. I would choose. I've alluded to this before. For some reason, I really want a Naruto Pokemon crossover. I, I just, how does it work? I would love, I'm glad you asked, Nick. Oh, oh, oh you're going to tell me? I'm going to tell you. Okay. I would love a Pokemon series where the trainers aren't useless as fuck. Okay. Or where the Pokemon aren't useless as fuck. So you go and, into the fight. Let's say it's like a 5v5. You, four Pokemon, and the other trainer. Yeah. And it's like just like a all around beat down. Yeah, it's just a battle royale yeah. where the trainers are also fighting. Yeah. Because it's like... In every Pokemon trainer relationship, some aspect of it pisses me off. Okay. Either the Pokemon are doing all the work mm -hmm. or the trainers are doing all the work, in which case the Pokemon are idiots. Yeah. Because sometimes every now and then you'll catch a trainer saying, dodge, mm -hmm. and they'll do it. Yeah. And it's like, bitch, if you see something coming, yeah. you step out of the way. You yeah. don't need my advice. You don't need to register what I said in order to jump out of the way. Yeah. There's a lightning bolt careening at your eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I've always wanted, I'm like shocked they've never done a series where the trainers fuse with the Pokemon and become like a Digimon-esque, like humanoid Pokemon type. Mm -hmm. They kind of do Ash, Ash is Greninja kind of becomes ash kind at, of at yeah, a yeah, point. yeah like he's like uses his shadow technique to like yeah, yeah. Like cling on to ash yeah yeah you know what i want what do you want mashal but make it pokemon and naruto so there's one there's one yes. poke trainer who doesn't get pokemon but he's just but like throws but down. he's the strongest guy because yeah. he's just beating down charizards with his fists yeah he's just a a crazy fighting type. <laughs> it's Toji, but Toji in the Pokemon universe. And it's like, Charizard, use flamethrower. And he's just like, you see Toji just flash step in front yeah. of him, grab him by the tongue and be like, you're not going to, you're not going to be using this for a while. Yank. You know how that happens? You know what the backstory is? What? This dude goes into the mountains. There's like a Hitmon Lee up there uh, or a Hitmon Chan. And he really wants this thing. He goes up and he's like, I'm not leaving until I catch this thing. He's throwing out, he throws out a Pokeball, doesn't work. Throws out another one, it like breaks the Pokeball midair. Yeah. Breaks all of his Pokeballs, and he's like, fuck, I gotta go home, get a new one. Hitmonchan doesn't let him. Yeah. Hitmonchan's like, one of us is going down. Listen, oh, your Pokemon are gone? That doesn't mean you faint. Yeah. You're not done with me. Yeah, you're not done. Yeah. Yeah, Cause that's what, cause what trainers do, they're like, oh, my Pokemon. You just out like a light, just like fall back like 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 a like a fifties yeah. woman with high blood pressure. Just yeah, like oh no, it's emotional distress. Yeah, like, you're just like Pikachu. No, yeah, Drew. This Hitmonchan takes out all of his Pokemon, and then he's like scooping them up in his <laughs> arms, and the thing's like, nah, bitch. Yeah, you and me. Yeah, he fights this thing like Rock Lee. Like comes back to the mountain every morning to evening, throws hands or feet with this <laughs> thing until finally. It just accepts. It's like, you know what? I respect you. 
I'm not going to be your Pokemon, but I'll come on fights. Yeah. And so now the Hitmonchan or Machoke gives him advice. It's just, it's just like, it's like corner. It's like his corner coach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's his Gyarados trainer. is like choking him out the neck and like Hitmonchan throws the towel in. Yeah. yeah they got to do that. That'd be so good. Well, right. Any flying type, he's cooked. Sit, like single Charizard, done for. This is what Mash, like Mash and Mash will literally just like, like kicks his legs together super fast and like he can fly. So any flying type, he could just like just jump or something. I guess so. If he can like, bring- There could be a whole arc where he's like, oh, I have to, like, I'm going to yeah. fight the flying type gym. And it's just him like trying to like practice jumping or something. And he's yeah. going to like all these Pokemon who have like incredible like leg strength. Like uh, he could go to, is there any like kangaroo type ones? I was going to say Kang, no. I was going to say Kangaskhan, but yeah. Kangaskhan is like more- There are no kangaroo Pokemon. <laughs> Kangaskhan is probably the closest thing because yeah. he's a marsupial. Yeah. Because he has like the baby in his in his tummy. Yeah. But that's like, that's crazy that we don't have that. Yeah. I don't think Japan knows Australia exists. That's true. That's yeah, they're just the like, best. Hey, weird. It's yeah. America light down yeah. there. Oh, what? Spiderville? Yeah. I'm not going there. Yeah. How, about, how about we pass? And this yeah. is, somebody in our comments is going to be like, actually, Gen 8 did have Kangaroos. It's my, my favorite. It had three evolutions. It was my favorite Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, but yeah, that's all we have, ladies and gentlemen. Me and Danny have to go write, uh, apparently, a Pokemon spinoff where... Um, Dude, it'd be so good. We I could want just, it we so could, bad. We could just Power World it. We're like, instead of Pokeballs, they have like a wristwatch that they use yeah. to like throw out Pokemon. We rip off Pokemon's original concept, which was flip phones. You remember Ooh, that? Oh, I don't remember that. It was, weirdly enough, that makes Pokemon like a pseudo Digimon ripoff. Mm -hmm. Because originally it was flip phones, and you like dial a little number, mm -hmm. probably nine one one. Yeah, and then the Pokemon comes out. Really? Yeah, that's what the Pokedex is. Yeah, crazy. All right, that's all we have, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching Otaku's Anonymous episode sixty three. We appreciate you guys checking in with us. Make sure you come see us Memorial Day weekend down in Houston, Texas, May twenty fourth to the twenty sixth. If you want to see me and Danny live, if you want to see us not swearing, not flipping you guys off, being super PG, uh, because then don't come because yeah, I'm doing X rated yeah, because we're going until John Cena stops <laughs> us, ladies and gentlemen. I've been NC Amber twenty three, also known as the Weeb Commander. Daniel, got anything you want to tell the people? I am Danny Mata. I swear to God, Nintendo, if I see a concept even close to what we just described show up in the anime, I'm suing. This I'm is, lawyering up. I'm teaming up with Power World. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, You're not chiming yeah, this in. Is, this is you already. This is practicing for Nintendo. Yeah, boy, is it. I'm coming for your house. I'm coming for your finances. I'm coming for your women. I'm bringing you in a cage. You got three minutes with me and John Cena, baby. You're stuck with me in here, man. Uh, that would be such a fun flip of the script if we sued Nintendo for stealing our idea because they do that to anybody who even says the word Pokemon and tries to make money on it. Yeah, boy, would it. How how convenient or like how funny would it be if like as people are watching this portion, you just get a like, this video has been taken yeah, down by like copyright. immediediately copyrighted. But all right, guys, thank you for being here. We love you. Goodbye. And now for my next number, I'd like to return to the